on today's part in my take we have a twofer for the people we have florida atlantic head coach dusty may getting ready for saturday night's semifinal at the final four in houston and then we have our good friend Kirk Goldsberry on to talk a little NBA. We're actually in his classroom right now. We're at the University of Texas, uh, and we taught a class. Molding some young minds. Today. Yeah, scary thought, scary thought. And uh, we have both of them on the show. Great, great show. We're going to talk a little baseball opening day. Uh, Fire Fest of the Week. Hank is doing the shocker. That's the Houston Cougars He's sign. He's doing the Houston Cougars sign. Wrong, wrong team. We are going to hang out with Dana tomorrow night. We just actually solidified those plans. I'm going to be doing this a lot tomorrow yes, night. Yes, yes. Hell sure. yes. Uh, all right. right, so we're in Texas. We're going to go to the Final Four, and we're going to use Game Time, the exclusive ticketing partner of Barstool Sports, created by fans for fans. Game Time is a ticketing app that makes it easier than ever to score last-minute deals on tickets to sports, concerts, and shows, and they guarantee the lowest price it's possible with the Game Time app. The biggest last-minute price drops can be found on the seats you thought you could never buy. The purchase process takes just two taps and 10 seconds. And once you buy tickets, they're delivered directly to your phone. Does anyone have their phone out? Can we yep. see what we're going to buy sure. on Saturday night? No printer needed. The app also allows you to easily share tickets with friends via text so you can get into the game seamlessly. Skip the hassle and enjoy the moment. Download the Game Time app or go to the website. Enter your email, redeem code PMT for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. What are we paying on Game Time? Uh, it's downloading. Okay, he's downloading the Game Time. It's, no, it's like it was like cloud. Oh, it's okay. Right. Oh, you got it. You got it. Oh, you're updating the Game updating. Time. Make sure you have your app updated so that you can get the best prices on the Game Time app. If I can beat you to it, yeah, I mean, mine, I can mine doesn't to need it. to be. Updated. You're the biggest in. fraud in the world. I use Game Time yeah. all the time. I, Seventy-seven dollars. Oh, Whoa. Okay. We're gonna get some some good seats. We though. are gonna get some good seats. We do need to do the thing. We need to buy seats, the last seats in the entire stadium, and, and decide then some courtside ones. Yeah, and decide who's going to what seats. We'll do that at the uh, during Firefest. We'll do. We'll figure out a way between the five of us. We'll decide two people. Maybe one person just has to go sit at the end of the yeah. stadium. Yeah, I, I that would actually be very fun. You should give them to kids. That's that's what we should give to kids. Yeah, they just have they to have sit. to go with a listener. They have yeah. to sit. Yeah, in the back. Game time <laughs> app. Go to the game time app. We'll figure it out. We'll, There's we'll announce really on good fest. low seats for under two hundred bucks. Okay, so one of us will go sit in the last row of the stadium. Is that the deal we're making? <laughs> one of the five yeah. of us yeah, by deal. themselves. I like those odds. Okay, all right. Game time app. Go check it out today. <laughs> Uh, use code PMT for both games for one game. So two losers. No, no, one game, and then you can come down. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be max. Use code PMT for twenty dollars <laughs> off your first purchase. <laughs> Terms apply. Okay, let's go. Welcome to part of my take. Today is Friday, March 31st, and we got baseball, boys. Baseball's back. Advanced stat, Christian Yelich is on pace to hit zero home runs this year. Love to hear it. Fraud, no power in that guy. Love to hear it. There's nothing better than opening day. It, it does feel like uh, we've made it through winter, just feeling seeing the boys of summer out there. Uh, it also is very fun to do those stats. I think Aaron Judge at one point was on pace for 570 home runs. That was cool. The Cubs are on pace for 162 wins. The Phillies are on pace for zero wins. Yeah, you remember for about two hours when Aaron Judge was a giant? And yeah. then in his first at bat, he goes yard off the Giants. Yes. That's a two-point swing. Yeah, remember too? I, didn't Billy say that because Aaron Judge deleted – or he unfollowed the Yankees. It was a good negotiating ploy. Yeah. 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 I, I remember that as well. But yeah, we. So. Did you see how big those bases are? They're huge. They look bigger than spring training. I, I'm going to say it. I'm legitimately excited for the new rules. Like, I think that this actually. There's been so many. So much hand wringing about how to fix baseball. I, I was reading an article that basically everyone who played in the WBC who had come from spring training was like, yeah, this feels like we're playing 10 hours. Like, why why wouldn't we have a clock? I, I'm excited. I think it's going to be awesome. More stolen bases, more – I think there was – it was something – every single team stole more bases in spring training than last year, even though it was a shortened spring training. The shift, everything. Like, I'm I'm excited for baseball. The shift is and that's, cool. And that, that might be because the Cubs won their first game. No, the, the shift – I think we – 
they actually listen to what baseball fans have been saying. Yes. Which is even baseball. That's how you know that your game is boring as fuck. When your most diehard fans are like this, I'm watching too much baseball. Yes. You need to shorten it a little bit. So there was some like initial controversy today. I think it was a Red Sox player, right? First he, ever he, to got be called, called out. Got called out because you have to step back into the box before eight seconds. And then the uh, umpire watches. And if the pitcher gets the pitch off in time or whatever, boom, you're out. Yeah. See ya. It's fun. It's fun, like, watching these rules be implemented and watch players, like, freak out for the first time. But overall, I think that what they've done is they've turned baseball into a game that more people will... Congrats. We did it. We did it. Through our Mike Greenberg's dumb rules, we made baseball watchable again. Yeah. But there's going to be games that are two hours and 20 minutes, which is perfect time. Yep. Yeah. Ready to go. And we will do a baseball preview at some point. I It was kind of... I don't want to take some AWLs to task, but... If you know, we're a little backed up. We just did our NBA preview like a month ago. We did our college basketball preview in January. We're going to need a little bit of time to see how everything shakes out before we do our preview. We still haven't done our NHL preview, have we? No, we did. We did that in December, actually. That We just did that to, yeah. so that Bissonette would stop hitting us up yes. and asking. But, but we're going to do it. We'll do another NHL preview. We will do an MLB preview. My, You want to just say who our World Series champion is? Yes. San Diego Padres. Oh, well, you're not going to say who they're playing? No, I'm just okay. saying I, we'll do our, our World Series loser preview later. Okay, I was I was going to pick the Mets, but Verlander's already hurt. Yeah, so the Mets are on pace to have every player <laughs> injured this year. Um, hmm, hmm. The Rangers are at the top of the AL West right now. Hmm. 1-0. and Huh. Catbird seat. Uh, you know what? I'll say it. This is the year. I think the Tampa Bay Rays are going to win it all. Okay. They've been, they, they, they've always been, for the last, what, like 10 years, 15 years, they've been like knocking at the door where like they'll have a couple years where their advanced analytics will always work and they'll be the, the team that everyone's like, watch out for the Rays and then they'll fall back down. I think they're coming back up this mm -hmm. year. I think the Cincinnati Reds. Yeah. Oh, good, good. Yeah. yeah. I think they were my pick last year. The Cincinnati Reds are 0 and 1. They lost to the Pittsburgh Pirates. O'Neill Cruz is a monster. Might so you're already for a major comeback. Okay. Mm -hmm. this is I do love how Cincinnati, like for whatever reason, they party the hardest for opening day. Yeah. It's a big, it's a parade and everything. That's, yeah. that's exciting. It's awesome. That's I mean, a, opening day is awesome. Yeah. It really is. Like it does feel like we've There's like made not it. a lot of day games on or there wasn't a lot of games on ESPN. Hey, no, there, the there were a lot of day games. There wasn't, there, I did my strategy of with all the rule changes, just blindly bet every over. There was like nine games during the day. You know not what? Not on ESPN. You, I feel like in the past, it was just the opening day was yeah. Was the world was the World Baseball Classic bad for baseball? Because now mm. the regular season is going to pale in comparison to it. Baseball fatigue. Yeah, I'm already out. I'm out. People yeah. People are wondering. I Actually, do, I'm twitching. Angels. Yeah. Angels. Good pick. I, I was about to say my my loser of the World Series is going to be the. Let's do it. Let's do loser. Okay. Too. Angels. Padres. Angels lose in a sweep. Mm. Unless they bring back the rally monkey, in which case they win. Angels beat the Giants again. Shades of what was that? 2003. Socia. Mike. Socialism. Mm. Yeah. Okay. David Eckstein. I mean, that's that's your guy. I'll do yeah. Eckstein. Oh yeah. Eckstein. Oh yeah. David Eckstein. Hus yeah. Hustle monster. I'll do um, the Tampa Bay Rays beat the Philadelphia Phillies because, of course. Yeah. Title time. Right. Yeah. Of course, that would absolutely happen. I actually am. I'm. I'm also very excited for the Cubs because I think they're going to be. My line is sneaky, not bad. I'm excited. Sneaky, I'll, not I, bad is very close to good. Yeah, sneaky, not bad. You're, you at least you got young guys you can root for. Yes, right? like exactly. you're building something. Do and I, I have sign to, some guys? Mancini, Swanson, like they're. It's sneaky, not bad. Do I have to pick a Chicago's uh, Cubs or White Sox since I'll be out there this summer? Is it? Well, just, just look old. look into White Sox Dave's eyes and then you can pick. Well, yeah, they're your Sox yeah. brethren. That's true. You have to go double Sox, right? That's true. Keep those feet warm. By the way, I think Trey Mancini is like the universally most loved guy in all of baseball. Because remember, didn't he beat cancer? He did. Yeah. And and he then Crushed went to the, like he he's the only guy who's ever gone to the Astros and people didn't hate him. Yeah. Think about that. That's yeah, really he, hard to do. He's a really good feel good story. Yeah, right. He dominated cancer. Can you like everyone hates the Astros. Everyone on the Astros. Yeah. And I, he's he 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 is somehow not hated. Uh Shohei Otani, not hated. Yeah, although there, I think there's some people who are like, he should be a Yankee. 
Yeah, he's just he, he's, <laughs> he's hated he's for a being, Yankee. Anyway. Yeah. You remember when he made his debut for the Angels? It was in spring training, and uh, Mike Francesa was like, "Yes, the Yankees dodged a bullet by not getting this yeah, guy." Yeah, to talk about this guy like he's Babe Ruth. Yeah, they're not even gonna be able to put him on the roster. Yeah. Babe Ruth would have been cleaning his job. Great track. call, great call. Yeah. Um, yeah, baseball. Let's have some fun with baseball. It's just good. You know what baseball is great for, especially this time of year, is just walking past the TV yeah. and seeing a sport on. Yes. A live sport in the middle seeing of the day. Seeing grass yeah, and a just ball. A live sports on a TV that I walk past, I'm in. Makes yeah. me feel good. Yeah. And then, you know, usually it's like opening day happens, then you you, you kind of hit a lull where you're like, oh, shit, there's 162 of these. Mm -hmm. And then, like, June rolls around, you're like, no, this is fun. Plus those bases, man, I'm telling you. They're huge. Those things are fucking They're fucking thick. huge. Um, all right, what else we have going on? Oh, we have a tweet that Hank has to address. Yes, Hank. We do. It's more than just a tweet. It's It sounds like a culture that you have to address. Yeah, so Asante Samuel uh, tweeted out of the clouds, like, really – I don't know what he's even doing these days. Is he on a show anywhere? He's being a dad. He's being a dad. Most job of all. He said, Lamar Jackson, my brother, trust me, you don't want to play for Belichick. Out of nowhere. He's a defensive player. I don't really know how that's relevant. Well, Belichick's a Is defensive that the line? coach. I thought you had something better than that. No, I, I just think it's like, I don't know. I think, I think you know, a guy like Tom Brady, Hoyer, or maybe a quarterback. A quarterback says something like that and maybe holds some more weight. But a, a defensive player talking to a quarterback – they're not even in the same position rooms. No, he's just saying he doesn't. He knows how Belichick is, and he knows Lamar. You wouldn't want to play for this guy. Does he know Lamar? Wait, I don't know, maybe. I also he called I'm him his brother. Sounds like he's got. He's just a little. I mean, again, Belichick's known for, for cutting players when you know the second they're on their decline. Well, it's not he's, Samuel it, some, it has experienced two separate cultures. He's experienced the Patriots, and then he's experienced a winning culture on the Eagles. And he just knows that you don't want to play for the Patriots. What is his beef, though? Because I just went to his Twitter page, and the tweet before that is a retweet where Brandon Marshall was calling him out saying, how dare you, Asante Samuel? How dare you, Shady McCoy? How dare you say Bill Belichick ain't that guy? What What is the beef? He probably got cut. Yeah. It was, it was very weird out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it kind of didn't make much sense. Ha it has to make you stop for a second. There's got to be something else to the story. There's something deeper there, yeah. Yeah. We got to figure out what that is. Maybe it's – oh, maybe He held it's, out in 2007, and, and, and there was a free agency departure. I mean, I think that he's, seems he's relevant the classic to me. guy where it's like they, they cut him. They weren't going to pay him. They cut him. And then so that probably, seems extremely relevant to me. Maybe that on the eve of a big payday, he tried to strong – or he tried to hold out, maximize his value. Sounds like that's exactly what Lamar is going through right now. Yeah. What was the – who's the guy who picked off uh, Russell Wilson? Darius, no. Malcolm Butler. Malcolm Butler. He also was – he, he was He, he was might be the, because of that. Sante Samuel is David what? Tyree catch. Yeah. But, no, I'm saying Malcolm like Butler, he like – He could have – He could have – Malcolm Butler got, like, put – You know, remember he didn't play in that yeah. game the next year, so maybe he's, like, he treats players bad. I don't know. I – It seems weird. It does. It seems – It seemed out of nowhere. Yeah, Hank, you seem like you're you're very delusional about anything related to the Patriots right now. No, that's not me. I'm, I'm thinking I'm very level-headed with the Patriots, always have been. Uh, Longest odds they've ever had in the Bill Belichick era, era since the first year, I think. Yeah, it's going to be a fun season. We're not going to get Lamar, unfortunately. It doesn't seem seem that way. Why I was, not? I was. I just doesn't seem like Belichick of, wants him. Samuel? I don't think. Bel I just don't think Belichick wants him. Which is crazy because it'd be so fun. So far, I would love to watch and see what they did. All I know is I'm all in on both it, Anthony well, Richardson and Will Levis. Yeah, so Anthony Richardson had his pro day today, and he lit it was up, lit, lighting it up. He's an absolute a athletic freak, Adonis. He threw it at the roof. He said afterwards he did that because Will Levis did that. Yeah. Um, I do feel bad for our friend Will Levis that he's like Anthony Richardson is such an athletic freak. Will Levis would be an athletic freak any other year. He just happens to be matched up against the guy who's like literally the I think it's he would he chart higher than any quarterback ever, right? Yeah, it's basically he's basically Cam Newton. Yeah. And better. Like, no, he's better. He's better but than Cam more Newton. athletic. The one which is a generation crazy to say. talent. It's Cam Newton with regular captions on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. With yeah, he speaks English. And yeah. also no Heisman or national title. That but this is that's college. This is the pro game. No, no, but Anthony Rich Anthony Richardson didn't do what Cam Newton did in college. Right. What, steal a laptop? That's the past. Yeah, that's it. We're focused on, you know. Right. In the present day, Anthony Richardson. Is better than Cam Newton right now? 
I'd probably agree. When they were both this age, whatever age oh. they were, yeah. Okay, so okay. when when Cam Newton was the number one pick in the draft and, and won a and national won a Heisman title and, and a Heisman, beat Alabama with a team that had no offensive like NFL talent. So now Anthony Richardson is better than that guy. That SEC wasn't the same as today's SEC. Oh okay. no, it's, no, it's, no, it's no, much harder. Not, it's not much it. harder to win in today's SEC. <laughs> okay. I, all I know is I've seen enough from both those guys. If you can throw a football off of a roof, I'm in. Dude, he was sitting down, not on his knees, sitting down, throwing 30 yards. Okay, I'm in. Yeah, like it was insane. How do you not? How do you not try, take him number one? What would happen in a game? <laughs> That's nothing to do with your bet. <laughs> no. What would happen in a game if a quarterback hit the roof of a dome with a pass? I guess what I mean. Jerry's world. Yeah, in Jerry's world. Don't the, don't the, the punts? Board. They have to repunt, right? Can you? Does that wind time off the clock when you do that? Ooh, I don't know. Now you found a loophole. I think I found a, a wrinkle in time. Yeah. Aren't, aren't the Titans getting a new stadium? Yeah. Maybe they build it specifically to to have erase an, time. To re- yeah, it's funny because I I think Will Levis. He he's obviously like he's way stronger than he was a couple months ago. They did the before and after pictures of Will Levis. I think all the Mayo talk got to him. I yeah. think he was sick of being asked about how he puts mayo in his coffee, how he eats. Every question was like food related to Will Levis. He's like, I'll show all of you. I'm going to get really strong. Now the question, it's shift to is Will Levis too jacked up to play in the NFL? I I mean, I'm rooting for Will Levis. He is a a friend of the program. I'm rooting for Anthony Richardson too because he seems like if he could put it all together, he'd be electric. Yeah. I did have a dream the other night, which is – Terrible to say, admit that like these are the dreams I'm having. CJ Stroud to the 49ers. Oh, imagine him and Kyle. That was my Shannon's dream. Offense. Yeah. They just it was crazy. I just had CJ Stroud in a 49ers uniform. I don't know how it happens. Yeah. Someone figure out how they can move up with I don't think they have a first round pick. No, they definitely don't, right? They don't, but they got a bunch of third round picks. Okay, so that's how it happens. They they bundle their thirds. How many third round picks equals a first round pick? We got to we got to do our own draft value 15 <laughs> 15 third rounders I'd equals say a first uh, Baker's pick. Baker's 13. First pick in the draft. Yeah. That would actually rule if someone you was could, like traded for an entire round of the draft. You would be able to build a hell of a football team out of only third round pick. Yeah. I've got major respect for the whole Patriots organization. Being drafted to that team helped me be a better player and a better man. And for that, I'll be forever grateful. Who's that? Asante Samuel. When? After he retired. Oh. Was he still owed money? No, that's what it was. It was he held out before the 2007 season. He went all pro, and then he signed with the Eagles, and he was mad. He said the Patriots offered him half as, as much as like what he was should have been getting. So don't hate the player. So he's hate bitter. The game. Yeah, he's bitter. Yeah. Belichick's playing the game correctly. Yeah, but it sounds like Lamar wouldn't want a situation where your coach is, is denying you money. That's exactly what Lamar's leaving right now. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, I thought the only way that it would work is where Lamar was kind of just going to like do like a fuck you to everyone else and prove it with the Patriots, and, and then, I don't know. I, and it never really made sense other than just like it'd be sick if we it got It would be Lamar. sick. Yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. But like in the world of, Point yeah, I just, just want to win. I'm just going to win to prove, prove it's kinda all It's kind of sucked to be Mac Jones. Like even your yeah. car insurance rates are through the roof. Yep, a lot of points. <laughs> yeah, you don't think it sucks to be Mac Jones? I don't. It, to have Mac it, Jones is a good quarterback. If you can get an All Pro quarterback, I guess that's you, not now Mac that he Jones has an fault. offensive like, coordinator, yeah. it doesn't suck as much. Yeah, but you still have the threat. You've got a looming zappy over your shoulder. Yeah, it's more like I feel bad. I'm not saying like he sucks. I'm saying it's got to suck to know that even like Robert Kraft being like. Meek Mill texts me, let's get Lamar. That's got to suck. Yeah, knowing that your that boss to suck. is texting with Meek Mill <laughs> yeah. trying to get you fired. That has that to suck. sucks. It's a business. They, they know. Okay, blinders on. Um, all right, we're going to talk some – let's talk some Final Four before we do that. Just for men, one day beard and brow color is the first temporary brush-in, wash-out color from Just for Men. The beard color experts, it's a breakthrough, dye-free formula, easily and instantly eliminates grays with natural-looking temporary colors – Fills in the thin, patchy areas and defines your beard for a thicker, fuller look. Now any guy can easily transform their look anytime you want your beard to look its best for interviews, dates, going out to bars, meetings, parties, weddings, events, podium moments, profile photos, or your big podcast isn't just for ears anymore. That's us. Check us out on YouTube. Just brush in lightly. Let's set and you're good to go. I was using it all March Madness. Covers up the grays. Covers up the patchy spot. It is the perfect product for any guy who wants a little bit of a fuller, better, more vibrant beard. You just brush it in, 
when you wake up in the morning, wash it out when you get home at night, easy as can be. Try new one day beard and brow from Just for Men. It will make you look like more of a man. That's the fact. The beard will look great. The beard, the beard color experts went to the lab and they came up with an incredible, incredible product. Try new one day beard and brow from Just for Men today. Okay, let's let's figure out this this ticket thing right now, and we'll talk a little Final Four. Did you fun fact about the Final Four? Um, if Jim Laranega wins the championship, he will be the oldest coach in any sport to win a title. That's wild. Wild. Wait, now we're call, we're counting all college sports. College, yeah, college football, basketball, and the four major uh, pro sports. That is wild. He, and he would do it. He, I think he would be a month older than Dusty Baker was in October. So, th- so, so Dusty Baker's the actually guy gets like. So he get Dusty gets like six months of being the oldest. D- Dusty Baker is older than Jim Laranega. But Dusty Baker was like 73 and five months when he won the World Series. Jim Laranega would be 73 and six months when he wins, if he wins the title. I like it. I mean, yeah. I, I feel like Miami is is kind of becoming a trendy pick right now just because people don't want to see UConn win. Right. Because it's the final four of underdogs. So you have which one of these underdogs is the most likely to win. And you'd probably say whoever wins the UConn-Miami game going to be heavily favored to win the championship, right? Yes. So, hypothetically, Although, whose line is it anyway? Miami against FAU. I the, don't think it would be that big of a... What, three I and think, a half? Yeah, I think it would be like two, three. I don't think it would be that significant. UConn, if UConn, like, kills Miami, they will be a significant favorite in the championship game. But, yeah, I... Listen, I want UConn to win because of my future, but I am scared to death of Miami. I don't think... I. There's two ways that this game is going to go. And I'm hoping that Dan Hurley does the fun way because UConn, basically, they have a lineup that I think could defensively stop Miami, but that lineup won't be as explosive offensively. I'm hoping he's like, fuck it, let's just go shot for shot. Yeah, you know what we really need? America needs Miami's super rich boosters to step up to the plate right now. Danny Boy Kane. Danny Boy Kane. uh, Dave Portnoy. Dave Portnoy, all the lawyers, all the drug dealers get together and put a bounty on this game. Mm. Put like I'm tell the kids, you know, they they created like an NIL company in Miami that does not actually Life Wallet. They don't actually have a product down mm-hmm. there. They're just like if you come to Miami, we're going to pay you money. That's how it should be. So they they created that. They need to step up to the plate and and all donate like tens of millions of dollars to split up as a bounty if this Hurricanes team wins the national championship. Put like some serious serious money on the line. Motivate the hell out of them. That's the only way that I see it happening. Agreed. Because other than that, I feel like we're in store for two UConn blowouts back to back. I would be fine with if that. If I get all I really need out of this Final Four is just one close game. One classic. One classic game. I don't. We got three chances at it. Give me one classic. I think that. I think. That, I think all of the games are going to be close. I honestly do. Maybe not the championship game, but I. I think Saturday night we're going to have two like competitive close games. I really do. I don't think FAU and San Diego State, either team is that much better than the other team. And Miami, like Miami, what if they just keep making all their shots? Yeah. Then then it you can't happen. beat them. It yeah. could happen. Yeah. Um, all right, so how should we decide who's going to sit in the last row in the stadium? Hmm. Do we do odds and evens? We could do – we could do a random num- number generator and the person who's furthest away from it. Okay. One through a hundred. You want to do that? Okay. Well, no, because then we'll all pick. <sighs> oh yeah. Yeah. We're not good at math. Yeah. We're in a business school right now. I think we go odds and evens, right? Everyone come memes and max come over here. You go one, two, three, shoot. You throw a one or a two and we keep shooting until one person it has it by themselves. All right. Okay, here we go. So this is going to be for the San Diego State FAU game. One person will buy tickets thanks to game time uh, so that they can come down in the, in, the second, yep. in the second game. But for the first game, they're going to have to sit one single ticket last row in the stadium. Max is already defeated. You throw a one or two. It's very easy. You just go one, two, three, shoot. You throw a you one or two. You can throw three or four, too. <laughs> no, you can't throw three or four. Max looks like a four-year-old right now on the ground in kindergarten. Odds or evens. Oh, I guess we could do that. Yeah. Okay. You want to do that? No, no, no. All right. All right. One, two, three, shoot. One, two, three, shoot. Do you want to do a practice round? No. Yeah. Yes. Okay. No. <laughs> this is great. Everyone should be watching the YouTube. All right. 
This is a practice. No, this is not a practice. You just said no. Okay, yeah, no, I know. Let's do one practice. Okay, Everyone one throw a practice. zero. Yeah. One, two, three, shoot. shoot. Okay. All right. So I would be out because I threw a one. Yes, yes. It would All be right, me. here we okay, go. Okay, got it. One, two, three, shoot. shoot. All right, we got to go again. We got to just keep rapid fire. One, one two, two, three, three shoot. shoot. One, two, three, shoot. shoot. Terrible podcasting. One, one two, two, three, shoot. shoot. Damn it! Oh, big cat. Oh, <laughs> fuck! <laughs> All right. Uh, Another loss. See you in the back row, buddy. <laughs> All right, so S uh, San Diego State FAU, I'll be sitting in the back row of NRG Stadium. <laughs> I'm excited. I actually, have I, oh no, that, in Jerry's world, we went to Alabama, Wisconsin, and I almost had a heart attack climbing up those stairs. <laughs> Might have been from extracurriculars. But uh, yeah, that was, yeah, so I'll be all the way up at the top for the first game. I can't well, we wait. Got that you bus, get to see the whole court from up died top. from gas Yeah, infection. that's true. Yeah, the, the cops came over and they're like, um, is this your bus? We're like, yeah. They're like, you're like five minutes away from blowing up everyone around you. It's like, okay, cool. You're just, you're going to have the all 10 angle. Shout out game time. Going to get great seats. Great seats. I'll come down and join you guys for Miami UConn. Yeah, this will be fun. I'm excited. Tweet out the picture. Just being like, hey, look how far away I am. Everyone's <laughs> like, nice seats. Nice seats, bro. Um, all right. Anything else uh, before we get to our interviews? I saw that. Celtics beat the box by 40. Okay. They did. And we're about to talk to Kirk Goldsberry, and while we were talking to him, they were playing, and he's like, I like the Bucs in this if they match up against the Celtics. They ma match up real well. Hank, so the, the Celtics are on fire now, right? They beat the Bucs by a whole lot. They probably blew the doors off the, the Wizards when they played. No, they lost to the Wizards by 20. That was a tough loss. Oh, that's tough. Uh, really made the getting the one seed a lot harder. Zards played tough. Celtics were never in it. I don't really know what happened there. I think the Bucs are doing some load management. I don't think so. I yeah I don't I think they might have just lost I think they might have just lost they're they're coming off a of back to back that's what Bucks fans was we saying. also had a Celtics were coming off back to back I think against the Wizards we had a hilarious uh, double no they weren't almost a double <laughs> double ejection last night where Kyrie pretty much a back to back pretty much Kyrie and Russell Westbrook in separate games tried to kick fans out of the arena um, just so soft they're dictators the so Mavs are a fucking a joke they're a disaster. Yeah. Yeah, um, the they couldn't one, even beat the Sixers. The one Actually, guy you know bad. got kicked out by Westbrook because he called him Westbrook, which is apparently you can't That's say that to him That's anymore. A slur. He said the W word. Yeah, you can't say that. Got kicked out, but then he got kicked in after they determined. Oh, you didn't tell him that he sucked or anything. You didn't cuss at him. You called him Westbrook. Yeah, we're sending you back to your seats, yes. which I like. Yes, I like. You I agree with you that. You shouldn't. You shouldn't swear at players. You shouldn't say anything vulgar to them or threaten them. Uh, but you can call him Westbrook. You can call him Westbrook. Yeah. Um, also, Pat Bev got uh, too small by Austin Reeves. Yeah. Who Austin Reeves is very good, but He's a great player. It really hurt because LeBron was like, "You go do that. I'm not. I'm. I'm above this." He had his henchmen take care of it. Yeah. That's light work for him. Yeah. Doesn't want to get his hands dirty. That sucked. That uh, sucked. The NFL is apparently exploring an international division Ooh. in football, like an entire division. So expanding. Uh, this was discussed at the owners' meeting, apparently. So everyone's been thinking London's going to get at least one team. Germany might get at least one team. And they're looking at other, maybe Mexico City. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be a European division or That or would what. be wild. But a full division that's just international teams. So the Jaguars are going to London finally? They might be. They might be moving over there. There are two stadiums in London right now that are ready for NFL teams. Uh, Tottenham and then I think uh, what's the, the O2. Other? The O2. No, Wembley. Which might be Tottenham. Yeah. I'm going to have to fact check that Hotspurs. one. No, Wembley is not Tottenham. But I, I, I like the idea of having international rivalries. Yes. Like, I think Where if they. Queen play? Queen? Wembley. Wembley, yeah. Well, she's. The not Queen? She's not playing anywhere or Queen. now. Queen. Queen. Six feet under. Queen. But it'd be good to have, like, England versus Ireland in a rivalry. It's just another, another move by. Uh, the NFL to just own every hour of our lives. Yeah. Because we will just be watching NFL football at 6 a.m. I will. At, at 8 a.m., just constant. Can you imagine an Italian team? I would love an Italian team. Italian team would be great. Yeah. Maybe we get NFL, we could actually get NFL rigged. Oh, yeah. They do like to rig yeah. games there. Oh, yeah. The, the, a team in Sicily? Yeah. Let's oh. do it. Oh. What are the tightest pants? I'm in. I'm in. Um, all right. Should we get to our interviews? 
Let's do it. Oh, one last thing. Uh, in hilarious uh, politicians trying to talk about sports, Eric Adams today was on the Yankees broadcast, and he called it Yankee Park. That's good. <laughs> I love that. I always love it when there was like some some politician from uh, Massachusetts that tried to pronounce Mumble, Menino. Yeah, yeah. Hondo. Just just a couple guys talking ball. K, Hondo, called yeah. called KJ and Rondo. KJ and Hondo. It didn't. What, what was Ted Cruz called it a basket goal? Uh, no goal. Basketball rim or yeah, no, basketball a, hoop? A, no, no. What do you call it? He, I think he called it a goal. Throw it through the goal. <laughs> yeah, or something like that. It's just always great. Uh, Demar Hamlin met with Biden today. Two guys that have been accused of being dead. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That one place. That was, I, I, <laughs> yeah, think that that, one I think that one flew. Yeah, that one definitely flew. <laughs> uh, what else? That's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're Trump, to be Trump got indicted. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck the porn star. That's our and that's our politics update. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Come come see us. We're gonna be at Kirby's Ice House in Houston on Friday and Saturday. Five to seven local Friday. One to three local Saturday. So it should be great. Yeah, a lot of times on math. All right, let's get to it. We got Dusty May and then Kirk Goldsberry. Before we get to Dusty May, quick word from a couple of our sponsors. Chevy football season is officially over, but that doesn't mean we're going to stop rooting for our favorite team. That team is Chevy and its franchise player, the Silverado, a truck with unstoppable grit and determination. According to J.D. Power, Chevy trucks have earned more new vehicle quality awards than any other brand. That's some serious hardware from Chevy. So head over to Chevy.com to learn more. Silverado is strong and dependable as the people who drive them. For J.D. Power 2022 U.S. award information, visit JDPower.com slash awards. Chevy is the truck that you should be aspiring for this year. It's truck season. It's about to be summertime. Get in that pickup truck, go down to the lake, maybe go to a concert, and do it in the Chevy Silverado, the best truck in the world. I'm not just saying that. They got hardware to back it up. That's how good the Chevy Silverado is. Tell them PMT sent you Chevy Silverado, our favorite truck in the entire world, and the truck you should be getting this year. Become a truck person with the Chevy Silverado, the truck with unstoppable grit and determination. We are also brought to you by our friends at Skrill. Skrill is the only betting wallet you need to keep your gaming funds secure and accessible, make instant barstool sportsbook deposits and withdrawals, spend your winnings whenever with the Skrill card, and keep your playing funds separate from your everyday bank account. Uh, we, we, you can do it with the Barstool Sportsbook. I've actually signed up for Skrill. It's super easy to keep them completely separate, and now you can supercharge your play with this limited-time offer. The first 1,000 customers who use Skrill to deposit $20 or more into their Barstool Sportsbook account will receive $20 welcome bonus to add to your Barstool Sportsbook playing funds between March 27th and April 2nd. So if you like something in baseball or maybe you like something in the Final Four, sign up for Skrill. Sign up, deposit $20 into your Barstool Sportsbook account, and they will match it, $20. So to claim your offer, pay with Skrill between March 27th and April 2nd and enter promo code SKRILL, that's S K. -K R I L L S K R I L L 20. Skrill 20 is the promo code. Ready to get your game on? Sign up for free at skrill.com slash barstool to start playing and pl uh, paying and playing your way today. Use Skrill to deposit $20 or more into your Barstool Sportsbook account, and you will receive a $20 welcome bonus to add to your Barstool Sportsbook playing funds. To claim your offer, again, pay with Skrill between March 27th and April 2nd, and enter promo code SKRILL20, SKRILL20, and they will match those $20. Have some fun. SKRILL20, it is the perfect wallet for anyone who likes to gamble, who likes to have the separate, you can use it in all walks in life. Skrill.com slash Barstool. Use that code Skrill20 and you will be set up with a nice little bonus from our friends at Skrill. Okay, here he is, Dusty May. Okay, we now welcome on a very special guest. It is head coach of the Florida Atlantic Owls. Headed to the Final Four, Dusty May. Uh, coach, thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. I think we met in Columbus. I don't know. You were staying at our team hotel or we were staying at the team hotel. Um, and I want to start by saying if we did meet, I apologize. Cause I'm pretty sure 
I walked through the lobby after your win against Memphis just saying that wasn't that wasn't a jump ball, guys. That wasn't a jump ball. We got lucky. We got lucky. So, um, yeah, apologies for that if I if I ruined the moment at all. No worries. Actually, I, I didn't meet any of you guys. I went through quickly, got out of the way, but our players and I have three sons. I have three sons, 21, 19, and 17. And they recognized everyone. So I, I think they're spending too much time on Barstool Sports. Yeah, that's probably that's probably true. So let's let's start with there though, because this run has been incredible. And with seven seconds left in the first round, it could have been over. Uh have you had a moment to think like, holy shit, that was quite the sliding doors moment of my career of FAU's, you know, traje- tra- trajectory. Like, has that set in like that? We were we were on the edge there. We were about to be done. Yeah, I, it seems like every big run, when you look at national champions or you look at Final Four participants, usually out of their first four or five games, they had one really scary moment where I even remember Coach Donovan at Florida got over the hump. He had been knocked out the first weekend, maybe four or five straight times. And then Mike Miller, Butler missed a free throw from a 90% shooter. And then Mike Miller hits a floater at the buzzer and the rest is history. So it, it seems like every champion or final four participant has some type of storyline similar. So, um, you know, fortunately for us, we didn't have to bank in an 80 footer or anything like that. Like our, our guy made a good play at the rim. And even I thought that the timeout call is a little bit overblown because there was a, a, a stop and, and play a, a couple minutes prior that we had a three pointer waved off. True. And we didn't end up score in that possession. So I think it's just when you lose those plays step stand out a lot more than, than the winning team having, having similar, uh, similar uh, bad luck. Yeah. yeah. Might be a team of destiny. I'd like to give you the opportunity to make your case for, for Florida Atlantic as being America's team or America's sweetheart in this final four, because I think we're all searching out there. There's a lot of underdogs. It would be one thing if it was, you know, ones and two seeds and then you guys, but there's a lot of underdogs out there. So why is FAU America's team? Well, we have a fun style of play to watch. I think from day one, we've wanted to be entertaining. You're in Boca Raton, Florida. You need to do something other than just win and just play the game to get people into a gymnasium when it's 80 degrees and clear skies out. So we wanted to have an entertaining brand of play. And fortunately, we had some guys buy into it. And then on the other end, uh, we've got some pit bulls that compete every possession. So I believe we're top 25 in the country in offensive metric sufficiency and and this same with defensively. So uh, we play both sides of the ball. We're very unselfish and we're a throwback team because we have a different best player almost every single game. And you guys are physical. I saw you push back some people maybe in uh, the lamestream media ESPN saying that you guys aren't physical. You guys went and beat a mem- very physical Memphis team, a very physical Tennessee team. Why are why are people saying you guys are soft? Let's Let's change that right now. You guys are physical. It's a great question. I think we're 330th in, in the country in height, and we're top 25 in, in defensive rebounding percentage. So it, it's difficult to be soft and do that. But I don't know. And, and especially when you 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 watch our league, UAB, man, they've got a high major, big, strong physical group. I think you guys have seen them uh, in your event. And in North Texas is the same way. So we've seen these types of teams in our league. Um, obviously you still have to go out and put in the work, but we're confident we can play any, any style and figure out a way to win or at least be in position to win. Yeah. You, yes. The yeah, conference USA is going for the triple crown. You guys are, you know, you got two teams left in the NIT. You won the CBI and you guys are in the final four. So it's obviously a very good league. Ab- absolutely. And it's, it's the best it's been since Derek Rose and Calipari were in Memphis, uh, as far as numbers and uh, you know, you look top to bottom, there's some really good teams in our league that didn't make postseason. Yeah. 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 You said before the Tennessee game, and we are a big rugby podcast over here that you're going to have to start <laughs> watching some rugby to get ready for Tennessee style of play. Did you actually watch any rugby? A few clips, actually. It, I don't even know. I'd seen on Twitter that there was a big, people were complaining about Tennessee's physicality and I had no idea what, what exactly it was, but you know, social media skews our minds anyway. So immediately after the game, they asked what I knew about Tennessee and I was more embarrassed that I confused Australian rules, football and rugby and combined the sport. So I was embarrassed by that. Uh, but no, it, I, I said it as a joke and jest. And if you said our team plays like a rugby team, I'd say, I'd say, hell yeah. Let's yeah. Go. I love it. Yeah. Th- it was funny. Cause w- when you said that my initial reaction was, uh, one, coach knows ball. Rugby is a very important sport globally. Two, it's interesting because it almost reminds me of something that Phil Jackson used to say or how he would you know, treat the refs in the media. He'd send a message through the media. By you saying that, you're like, hey, you better call it fair next game. No more forearms, no more elbows, nothing like that. I thought that was a good piece of coaching on your part. 
Well, hopefully uh, it, it helped maybe one possession, but that that wasn't why I said it. I was trying to be funny, and and uh, sometimes when when you're not that funny and, and you try, that that's the you get the backlash. Yeah. So sticking with your run, uh, we were in Dayton. We fell in love with Fairleigh Dickinson. Dave actually called the, his shot. He said they're going to beat Purdue, and we had the theory that they were actually too short to play basketball. Did you notice that at all? Where it's like their lack of height was actually kind of shocking and how much speed they had cuz that was a that was a tight game they gave you everything yeah well going back to the Purdue game as soon as we saw them play Texas Southern we said man this is going to be a tough matchup for Purdue now we didn't call the win and uh, obviously Dave uh, he, he was he was out ahead of that one but we did think that if things didn't go well for Purdue then they could pull the upset in the first couple possessions uh, the big fella uh, missed a couple hooks in close and then their three point shooters produced three point shooters looked out of rhythm. So from the from the first couple minutes, it looked like it was going to be a scary game for Purdue. And then when we played them, I was blown away at their team speed. And then they just found the rhythm at the right time. I you know after playing them and then playing the way they did, I was I was like, how did this team lose 15, 16 games or whatever? But then they you know they had a couple guys who were thirty percent shooters or twenty percent shooters that started making three or four threes a game. And the heck, that could be enough on 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 a given night. Yeah, are you were you were you a little happy that Purdue went down because you're a Hoosier? Oh, I, I did. I was just happy that. Uh, well, I was I was shocked. I said the staff and I were talking about. It, we said we're going to be a, a double digit favorite to go to the Sweet Sixteen. So yeah. it was just kind of a joke. But we knew how difficult the game was going to be. Yeah, yeah. it's funny. After the game was over, we went back to the hotel and you guys were getting in. And Dave went up to every player in your team. He was like nobody believed in us. Nobody. He thought that you guys were FDU. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I don't think very many people picked us to beat Memphis either. I thought they were terribly underseeded. I thought they were a really good team, especially the last month of the season. They were probably a top five or ten team in the country after drilling Houston in the AAC championship. So uh, he probably said that, and I doubt anyone in our travel party that team at that time even noticed. Yeah, Big Cap brought up the uh, the Indiana connection. I, I was wondering, we were talking about this on Monday's show. You came up, you were a, a student manager with Bobby Knight when he was the coach of the team. Did he did he give you any tips or is there anything that you've incorporated into your coaching philosophy and coaching style that you got from Bobby Knight? Any any uh, chair throwing things like that? No, I, I try not to throw any chairs. Um, but yeah, there, there, there's there's not a day that goes by that I don't use something that I learned from Coach Knight. I don't think people realize how far ahead of his time he was as far as teaching, communicating, efficiency of his words, efficiency of, of the of the uh, English language. But he also used analytics that we use now. That at the time, you know, he's talking about the percentage of defensive rebounds and 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 these types of things. And now they're considered the, the analytics movement. Well, he was using a lot of that stuff back in the day. So I just think in so many areas, he was ahead of his time. He was an unbelievable teacher. And just things were a lot different then than they are now. That's interesting. They said efficiency, way to put it. efficiency of language is <laughs> my new favorite. <laughs> like that. that, that you just that in on it. <laughs> yeah. No, is, is there anything uh, – like that's a, it's a really interesting because like obviously we can see where that would take us with his fiery personality. But also at the same time, I, I have to imagine that as a coach, sometimes less can be more. You don't want to you don't want to overdo it with information that that you're passing along with you know uh, when a fewer co or a, a simpler concept might work. Is that fair? Two side notes. Number one, I was a probably sophomore manager and I was in charge of stats and he asked for a score. There's three teams playing and and as a 19 year old, you said, "Hey, red has three, gray has this," and he says, "Gee, many blah blah blah." Red two, gray five, white one. Now, and at that point, I said, you know what? I was just mumbling and rambling to say that I was given way too many uh, details or way too much information. And then the other one, Coach and I used to say the word, the F word could be used as a noun, verb, adjective. So I guess that may be part of the, the efficiency of, of the English or the, <laughs> the use of the English language. Yeah. So uh, the ball has been a big point of uh, contention in this tournament. Have your guys complained about it? Do they... Do they feel different uh, shooting this ball? We got to get to the bottom of the ball. Well, they've add, it, it's a brand new ball, and I, I don't think there's a ball made that you can pull out of a box, air it up to its maximum, whatever it is, and then go out and balance it, and it feels like what you use every single day because you don't get a new ball every day. So, um, hopefully, these these basketballs have, have been used a little bit and they're worn down because I think the newness is the biggest part, but. It, it seems like we should have one universal ball for college basketball yes. for 
every team to use. And I know they use one ball for the NCAA tournament, but every game we go to, we have to practice a different, we have a closet full of basketballs. We have to practice with a different one every week, depending on where we're playing. So I would think it's time for, for all of us to come together. And even if we have to sacrifice a, a few thousand dollars into our, our overall budget to have one basketball for the betterment of the game. Yeah. So- why, why can't you guys just take all the balls that they're going to be using in the final four and just, just practice with those all week? Well, we, we've accumulated several now, and actually uh, we have the game balls from our games, and one of our players came in yesterday morning to shoot, and he said, hey, can I use these? Because we only have like two of the regular basketballs that, w- that we purchased. So I said, you know what? You can use these. It doesn't matter. Just make sure you bring them back because they are the game balls from the FAU's first Sweet 16 and Elite Eight. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what about uh, the stadium? Because the NRG Stadium, this is a big thing we talk about. You guys, I, I'm sure you guys talk about. It. We talk about it for a different reason. Uh, whenever you get into a football stadium and you're trying to shoot, uh, has your team ever played? Well, you did play the the Conference USA Championship. Is in Jerry? Is it in Jerry's world or the practice facility? Yeah, it's in the the practice facility. They 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 curtain off half of the, of the the stadium, and there's two courts set up simultaneous. And then so there's a curtain behind one side and then they use the stands on the other. So it's a big open arena. It's different. Um, it's we, So we probably played in the closest thing to a, a true football stadium as anyone playing. Yeah, yeah, because it definitely is an issue. I feel like every time we get to the Final Four. Speaking of the Conference USA, why is Jelly Walker the best player you've ever coached against? Because we love him. Uh, I'm a big I'm a big Jelly Walker fan, but I, I'm not taking anything away from Marquise Noel. That okay, is a, yeah. okay. And the state guard, man, those these New York City guys, because usually the the small dynamic guards they they really score and put a lot of pressure on your defense. But Noel, he might go get thirty and twenty. Uh, I, we felt like we did an unbelievable job on him, and he got thirty and twelve. So and then so go ahead. Yeah, well, I was gonna say I I thought that you watched the Michigan State game, and maybe I'm way off and I don't know ball, but I thought that part of your game plan was let's let him shoot more. Let's give him more opportunities to shoot because we'll take a three-point shot from him instead of him throwing a perfect pass for an easy layup or dunk. Was that part of your game plan with him? It was. We wanted to first take away as many of his his assists as we could, and then we wanted him to take shots at the rim or the mid-range. We actually wanted – he's slightly more efficient from three than he is in the paint or from mid-range, but – uh, his his shots around the three point line are, are extremely efficient. Fortunately, uh, he takes some that are really really deep that skews his his numbers a little bit. But he is he's a special talent, and it, for him to play forty minutes the way he does, I don't know if we faced a better guard. And, and I thought Kendrick Davis was sensational. Jelly Walker, Tyler Perry from North Texas was our league's player of the year. Um, and they play low possession and he puts up great numbers. So we faced that. We faced Antoine Davis who who just came up shy of Pistol Pete's record. So yeah. We faced probably a who's who of dynamic guards this year. And when you look across the board, our guys have, have pretty much made them score officially almost every time we played them. Yeah. Okay. Would, you, would you like to apologize to America for, for knocking him out for uh, knocking Noel out of the tournament? <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay. That's the, that's the right answer. That was a test. Uh, how much of your recruiting technique is just like, if you were to split it up between uh, X percentage basketball stuff and X percentage, look at the beach. Here's the beach. You're in, you're in South Florida. <laughs> Isn't the beach cool? Well, we obviously, when they're on their official visits, we go to the beach and we eat our meals on the beach and, and we do our photo shoot on the beach and we on the beach on, on the beach on the beach. But then once they get here, we condition a couple times on the beach. And other than that, we never go to the beach, except we do tell them, Hey, on Sundays, if you enjoy the, the ocean, go hang out on the in evenings. After you've got, you put in your work, if you want to go hang out, we even have a couple players that, uh, sometimes they'll go at 6 a.m. and read and meditate. We've got a serious group that, that's always looking for the, the best way for them. So we use it a little bit. But the thing we sell is is the perfect weather all year, the blue skies, the the quality of life. You yeah. can wear shorts. You walk around campus. And just how much better you feel when the sun is out yeah. 365 days out of the year. So we sell that part of it. That you're going to have more energy. You're going to feel better because of the the natural beauty than uh, than you would going up to to wherever wherever you know who else is recruiting you. The, that's a good sales pitch. So I I read a story that uh, when you signed with FAU, you had a moment of regret, and it's funny because we actually were talking to uh, Danny Hurley on Monday's show, and he had a similar moment where he was like, "What the hell is going on here? This is a mess." So that moment, you cried. Did you cry? 
Yeah, you said moment of regret, maybe choke on my water. Um, <laughs> I did. And the media, we just had about 100 media members and they asked me about it. They said, what would 2023 tell 2018 Dusty May? And I'd say, tell him to stop being a big baby and stay the course and get to work. So it was just, it was overwhelming. I was leaving complete and utter happiness. And one thing in our business, I've tried not to ever chase anything other than happiness and and professional fulfillment. So, um, but yeah, it was overwhelming at the time. I, I I was very impulsive signing the contract, going too fast. And then when I saw everything, um, I was just overwhelmed in that moment. But luckily my wife is is tough. She's tough as nails. She basically told me that, hey, this is a decision you made. Uh, there's nothing we can do now. You might as well get to work. And and uh, by the next day I was in, in the trenches again. Yeah. So you mentioned your son. Uh, have you given him some shit? Because he's a walk-on in Florida, right? Well, we get, we gave him some stuff. We went up to Florida and beat those guys. So, yeah, yeah but now he's your his dad's going to the Final Four. I would assume you would have had a roster spot for him, and instead he was didn't make the tournament. Yeah, I have a middle son that's a walk on at UCF. It was never an option for them to play for me. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I've I, the the last week they they're calling me Ted Lasso, and it's something that I've I've evolved into being mild and and cool, calm, and collected because by nature. I'm, a, I'm, I'm nuts like a lot of coaches used to be. And just so when I still coach my sons, it's hard for me not to be nuts. So my wife said from early on, you'll never coach the boys no matter how good they are. And as a coach, you, if you're going to coach your sons, they either have to be way too good above your level or they have to be not good enough to ever play. If they're ever in between that gray area. <laughs> yeah. it's not, Wait. It's so, not, yeah. So this is your wife's fault. Like, are they pit? Like, I would be pissed if my dad was in a Final Four and I was like, I didn't, I didn't get to go. I wasn't playing on the team. <laughs> well, luckily, uh, you know, and, and I'm close with both staff, so I'm fortunate both of them have a place in, in this game and can be a part of it. But fortunately, those both of their seasons were done, are done, and so they're traveling with us now. And, and FAU's been awesome with taking our families and letting everyone's families share this experience because that's probably the coolest part. Other than watching your players put in all this work and and, and receive uh, what's what's going on, seeing your family who you drag them all over the country, changing schools, daycares, jobs, all that. And heck, I was obsessed. I would just leave and my wife would have to sell the house, organize the moves, all that kind of stuff while raising three three boys. Um, so it's it's awesome just to, to be able to share that with them. Yeah. Well, so you mentioned you uh, before we started taping that you were on the sidelines for uh, the buzzer beater, Florida versus Wisconsin in the Sweet 16. Uh, fuck you, first of all. Second of all, uh, I guess tell me what it felt like from your point of view because – it was utter heartbreak for mine. I mean, the video, uh, that's the beauty of Barstool is we videotape everything. So I get that tweeted to me. Anytime that, that like the shot comes up, it's just I get tagged under it constantly. Would you call that your moment of weakness, Big Cat? No, I would still say that when, when we were up nine against Duke at, at halftime of the national championship, that was probably the weakest I've been. But it was a weak moment for sure. That was the Brian Butch team. No, Brian Butch was a, a long time ago. Frank you, were, yeah, no, that was uh, Frank Kaminsky and Sam Decker. Okay, yeah, yeah the, the those guys. Group, yeah. Group, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that 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 sucked for me. You, I mean, w you have to admit that that was lucky. Well, it, it went without a doubt. But let's rewind. The Wisconsin has the ball. We're uh, in position to foul. We knock it loose in the backcourt. Uh, I forget the guard's name. Show Walter grabs it and he hits a floater to send it into overtime. Mm -hmm. So a, a floater to, to go into overtime is somewhat lucky. And no, I would that's say a shot. Goal. He made that shot all year. <laughs> so you, you see my point. It's a lot like the missed calls in one of these games where it, it follows a missed call that the, the, the winning team. Uh, you know. So, yeah, you get my point. But, yeah, how about that? A floater to go overtime and a floater to win the game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they were good shots, both of them. I, yeah. As a fan of the sport of basketball, I had to take my hat off and say that's that's just a good shot. Yeah. You, and then obviously A Rod sitting courtside added to the yeah the, 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 yeah. Show Walter did the discount double check. It is funny because you actually just proved your initial point for the first question that like I do black out the fact that we had a lucky bounce. Uh, all I think about is like man we got screwed. So you're right, you're right. Okay, that makes me feel a little bit better. Um, did you guys go on to win? Go to the Final Four that year? No, we were up big against South Carolina. Oh, damn. Literally, they shot like damn. 25 free throws in the second half, and, and and they were tough. And they had, you know, obviously Thornwell and Dozier and and all those guys ended up, three of those guys ended up playing extensive, you know, playing multiple seasons in the NBA. So it was a heck of a team, and, and uh, yeah, they, they found a way to win, but a, a great run by. Brutal. By 
Uh, yeah. Here's a tip because you've never been to a Final Four. I've been to two. Um, so if you win on Saturday, try not to go to the bar on Sunday for 14 hours because you still got a game on Monday. Noted. Okay. All right. Because that's that's a that was a mistake I made. I made that mistake. I I was the day that Wisconsin played Duke. I was drinking Pedialyte in my uh, hotel room, being like, "How am I going to get myself off the mat here?" So just don't so do after that. Saturday, you went to the bar Sunday, and I'm assuming you were overserved. I ne- I didn't leave. Hank Hank's not in the room right now, but I literally we went to the bar at like 11 a.m. and I didn't go home till two. I was like, "I'm staying," because I was like, "I may never get back here," um, which is proven to be correct. But uh, yeah, try to try to keep a little something in the tank for Monday. No promises, but I'll do. I'll do my best. Maybe just eight <laughs> hours at the bar, <laughs> just beer only. No, or, uh, no shots. Yeah. No. Okay. Shots, just w- right. maybe one shot, right yeah. when you get there. But then that's it. Then you're done. Yeah. Uh, when you're when you're going up against a coach that's that's super fiery, like if you were to coach against a Danny Hurley, uh, does it? Do you step your game up in that situation where you see him, you know, screaming every word under the sun at the refs? doing the scowl at the refs, do you then have to be like, okay, I need to match that intensity, or is it just going to be dusty? Just dusty is going to be dusty just, every day. Just dust in the wind. I'm going to be me, just hanging out, not not getting too emotional. It's not who I am anymore. Um, and I'll lose my voice too quickly, and then I'll never be able to help our guys the rest of the game. Yeah. 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 D- dusty is a great name, by the way. It is. Dusty it's is a fake a, name. Yeah, you're, you were born, if you're going to be named like Skip, or Dusty, you're going to be a coach at some point. Yeah. Was it a situation where the name led you into coaching? No, I hated it my whole life until I became an adult. And then I would meet people and 20 years later, they would remember Dusty May. And so I was like, wow, what, this is actually pretty cool in my profession that I can meet people and they always remember me, even if I have no idea who they are. So um, I've actually used it as a positive. I, I never liked it before. I don't particularly like it now, but um, I've rolled with it. Yeah. It's I mean, memorable. I think, yeah. I think we said it sounded like a porn star from the eighties. I think Titus and those guys, I remember uh, there, there was a show and it was either I was a NASCAR driver, a professional wrestler, <laughs> or a basketball coach. Yeah. I, think, yeah. I think basketball coach third. Yeah. Or, or an allergy advisory. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's exactly it. All right. I have a couple nerdy basketball questions for you. One is um, your team is phenomenal shooting the three. You guys play, you know, four out, five out. Uh, in terms of recruiting, like, is it as simple as we won't recruit anyone who can't shoot? Because you see teams all the time struggle with finding those shooters. And uh, how how does that, like, is that something day one you're building? Like, if you can't shoot, I'm not recruiting. We try not to recruit anyone that can't shoot. And if you can't shoot, then you have to have one really unique skill. You could be an elite playmaker, elite passer. And we feel like if you're a lead in one of those other areas, we can find a way for you to be successful. What we've tried to do is take really good athletes who are smart and tough and are good shooters and feel like because of the work we put into it, that we can help them become really good shooters. So we feel like we have a a group that's tough, athletic, strong, can guard, but also they are all good shooters or they they were good shooters that become really good shooters, but they can also dribble pass as, as well, which I think that's what makes us unique that they all can put it on the floor and catch and shoot and really defend at a high level. Yeah. I mean, it, you'd be shocked with how many teams I feel like I watch where it's like none of these guys can shoot. So it's, it's refreshing to see a team where it's like you, you can't leave anyone open. It obviously is a complete mismatch hell for the other team. Um, and the other question was, the transfer portal, a lot of people hand-wringing about the transfer portal. Oh, my God, it's going to ruin college basketball. Uh, you've done a really good job of getting guys from Power 5 conferences to go to FAU. How? Like, I think that's the, the, the beauty of the transfer portal that a lot of people don't see, that you get the movement both ways. It's not just, oh, the best guy on Wofford is going to go play at Kentucky. Like, you can get guys who maybe aren't getting time at Power 5 to come to FAU. How, what's the pitch there? Well, anytime there's a power five, I would should say anytime because we have three on our roster and two of them were, were situations where they're plug and play guys. We need a point guard. You're a point guard. You're coming down for a reason because you, you're coming down a level because you want to play and be a major, have a major role, excuse me. And then we, we had a, a, our starting center left to go play uh, professionally in Europe a couple of years ago. He had a bad knee, so he needed to start making some money with his career. So we had a starting position open. So we got two of our power five guys because we had an immediate need. And so they were plug and play. And then the third one, Jalen Gaffney, I'd known him because we recruited him at Florida. And he was just looking for something different when he left UConn. And so because of the relationship, we didn't need a guard. We had everyone back. But he just wanted to be a part of it. And he's been he, he's received almost no credit 
but he's had his, a huge, huge imprint on our success because of his intelligence and his selfishness and him just wanting to be a, a part of a really good team. So it's been unique that all three of those guys are major contributors, but I don't think we would bring one in that we didn't think could play a major role because they would be frustrated because they're leaving a lot of nice stuff where they're not playing to go to a place where may not have as nice stuff where they're not playing. So yeah. What about your son? He's at a power five conference right now. He mm. enters the transfer portal. I know you said that you're not allowed to coach him. What if he just says, you know what, I'm going to transfer to FAU. Do you have to resign at that point? Well, I've even said too, that I, I don't know if it's, it's completely healthy to have my sons in the locker room. I have a great relationship with them, but I would never want our players to think that they're telling me what's, what's being said in there. I just, unless it, it, it's the only option or, or whatever the case, I don't think it's a good fit. And I want them to go grow into their own, their, be their own men, develop who they want to be, their personalities. And, and probably if they're here, I'm going to have too much oversight and control over, uh, you know, who they are. So I, I want them to grow, make some mistakes, learn from them, and just just decide who they want to be as people. Okay. That's probably healthy. I yeah, see I is. see. there's a bunch of stuff written behind you on the whiteboard. Do we have to blur that out? Are what you giving away? It's competition, spirit. No, it's, 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 it's the traits we talk about in recruiting. And then, uh, oh, so give it to us. Yeah, well, how, uh, recruit us. Act like me and Big Cat are in your living room right uh, now. You guys obviously have the competitive spirit. That's yep. number one. You've got to have that. You, Coach, first you guys, question, do you have a beach? I'm really into the beach. Do I have – we have a beach. Okay, right? I'm in. So, oh, beach. First question for There's me – I shuttle to the beach from yeah. campus. For course. First we question for me, I can't shoot at all, but I have a competitive spirit. Would I be a match? Well, we, we, we're always looking for a good 14th man. So, yes, <laughs> it doesn't close any doors. Uh, functional intelligence you guys are probably out on that one that we're yeah like no, that, functional that's, that's not a no. not a good fit the word no. functional completely ruins it <laughs> yeah. for us yeah basketball skills i no. you know uh, okay i'm the exact right. same size as marquise noel i can give you a look i can be scout team marquise <laughs> and then speed physical and mental i think you guys have the mental speed you guys are yeah. quick with but i don't think you have the, the physical speed so probably not a great fit for the owls no no um all right so i have a very important question i got a couple more questions but one very important one and uh you're gonna have to start prepping yourself for this because you've done a great job with fau but knowing how the big 10 works and knowing how the indiana fan base works uh if you have more success they're gonna just be tweeting that picture of you in a red sweater and being like, Coach, you want to come home? You want to come home to Indiana? What are you going to say to that? Because that's going to happen. I mean, they Indiana fans are still asking for Brad Stevens to go to Indiana. I'm going to say I, I absolutely love my time in, in that state, and the, it, the basketball there is a religion. Uh, Coach Woodson and his staff are doing an unbelievable job. They've got a great team. they got it rolling. But I love being here. I, I don't know uh, how, how you could ever leave these guys in this situation. Uh, from what we built and, and and the direction we're going and the growth the, the growth opportunities here this place is it's amazing how fast this university athletic department are growing and hopefully this just uh, speeds up the process even more okay good answer uh counterpoint Hoosiers the movie I pop that mm-hmm. in and I'm like check it out dusty and then you start crying and then I seal the deal <laughs> well that that's a different thing yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, you coach stays, I stay. Coach goes, I go. Is yeah, it one of those right. My team yeah. is on the floor. Yeah, well, exactly. You, you know, coach, I, I I measured the height of the basket at FAU <laughs> and the height of the basket in Indiana. It's the exact same height. It is. the The dimensions are the same. Actually, a couple of people asked me if I'm going to do that in uh, in in the dome in Texas. I'm not, but uh, it reminds me. Yesterday, one of the reporters asked me, "How tall are you?" And I said, 5'10 with shoes." Let's make sure we're clear. But I only measure myself with shoes. So yes, yes. <laughs> uh, you got you got uh, Tom Herman down there at FAU too. You guys are building a little good. It's like the new cradle of coaches down there. Tom Herman is one of my favorite college football coaches because of his Longhorn hydration chart that he would post up in, in, in the bathrooms where we would show on a scale of how dark your pee was, whether or not you're a bad guy or a good teammate. Has he put those up around any of the athletic facilities? Is he monitoring people's level of urine? Not yet, but I'm, I'm, a, it, I, I'm assuming he, he'll monitor big cats on, on Sunday in between yes. the games. <laughs> yes, yes, that's a good call. Um, all right, my last question, rowback question. R-H-O-B-A-C-K.com, great joggers, polos, Q-zips. If you're in Boca Raton, you're trying to golf, Roback has you covered. Use promo code TAKE for 20% off your first purchase. My last question is actually, I'm going to give you another tip. So I'm giving you all my tips. I'm doing a brain dump for you. Um, I do watch a lot of college basketball. Uh, Usually when San Diego State's down like seven or eight, the game is over. 
I'm going to tell you right now that's not the case this year because there's been multiple times in this tournament where I've been like, oh, they're done. They won't be able to find seven or eight points. So don't think that you've won if you're up like 12 to 4. No uh, celebratory dances before the the buzzer sounds? Yes, yes, because they're different. They're different this time. It, it confuses my brain. There's some teams, Wisconsin, Virginia, some of those teams, like if you open up a 10-point lead, there's no they can't score that many points. So if we have a 10-point lead, how early can I break out in, into the gritty? Oh, I think maybe like a minute and a half left. I was going to say half time. Half. Yeah. Do a half time. Minute and a half up 10. Yeah. Like do the gritty. Yeah, right, make your I, free throws. You got to make your free throws. That's the big thing. You have to make your free throws. That's uh, I, I stress that all the time. Do you guys simulate? Uh, they're a lot like us. They 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 found ways to win just about every night, and a lot of a lot of nights it looks differently. But man, they're they're a good basketball team. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys simulate pressure in practice when it comes to shooting free throws? Is there anything that you do to turn up the heat on guys and see you know okay you're under the gun right now, go shoot your free throws and and you see what happens. Yeah, we have competitions. We try to, to do everything we can to add a little bit of pressure. But uh, our guys now being a veteran group, they've been in these game moments so many times. I think you just – once you're in it, you know how it feels. You know how to prepare better. So because of our guys have been in these situations so many times, I think they're they're more comfortable than, than a lot of younger teams. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Dusty, thank you so much. We appreciate the time. I am upset that you mentioned that Florida thing with the buzzer beater. Um, that's going to put me in a little bit of a spiral for the rest of the day, but that's okay. Uh, we're rooting for you, and uh, we're excited to see you live in Houston. We're get get the owls ready to go, and maybe yeah, do do the ta- you you can go viral if you just do the the tape measure for the for the basket. Like you should do that. I'll consider it. Okay. That, that, that's why I do this uh, for an opportunity to go viral. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That's, why. that's, I mean, isn't that the goal of all coaching? That's the goal. That's just, the goal. Just go viral. I also, you, what you did to UAB in the conference championship game, that was mean. That was too much. You got, that was too much. I was. Did you watch it? Yeah, of course I watched it. I'm, I love Jelly. And I was like, I think they, I think UAB was up like 15 to 14. And then the next thing, it was like a 20 point lead for FAU. And you got everyone off the scent too, because you guys would have been an at large team, but you win the conference USA and everyone's like, oh, it's just one of those, you know, small conferences that that's an auto bid. So I guess that worked in your favor. It did. I was, you know, obviously I didn't want to lose, but if we did, we did, it would be, it would mean two conference USA teams got in in the same year because the UAB, North Texas, there were other teams that were, that are, are good enough to be playing playing in the tournament but you know how it goes if you, if you lose one game here or one game there it, it knocks you out yeah yeah so yeah I, that was not nice i jelly walker's my guy so yeah they're, 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 they're tough yeah. <laughs> I apologize. yeah there we go i accept your apology all right uh oh, coach enjoy. best of luck and uh looking forward to saturday appreciate it enjoy the show thanks guys dusty may was brought to you by our great friends over at pepperoni what breed of dog do you guys think would be a number one pick in the basketball draft. Mutt. I've got an easy answer. You're taking Mutt? Mutt. I'm going Air Bud. Oh, He's that's proven it on the court. That's a good call. Air Bud was elite. Pepperoni treats have the taste and aroma that dogs find irresistible. You can celebrate your favorite sports team with your BFF, your pup. Pepperoni treats has the ultimate treats for your MVP, your most valuable pup. Treat your BFF to the ultimate meaty indulgence. Pepperoni treats. Be your best friend's best friend with pepperoni treats. They've got a delicious original beef flavor treat. Dogs love it. They'll go nuts for it. They'll behave for it. You can train your dog using pepperoni as well. Go to pepperoni.com to find a bag near you. That's P-U-P-P-E-R-O-N-I.com. Find a bag near you. Dusty was also brought to you by Topgolf. I love Topgolf. My favorite parts of Topgolf, I like competing against friends. I like going there with friends that don't play golf. Even if you're not a golfer, you can go to Top Golf, have a great time. It's like you're playing a video game in real life. Love hitting off the top deck too. Nothing better going to Top Golf at night, hitting off that top deck, feeling like you're driving at 350 yards. I love Top Golf. They've got food and beverage, the only place that you can play around and then order another, or you can hit a slice and then grab a slice. It's all the fun of outside, but it's got the comforts of inside. They've got comfy heated bays in the winter and cooled bays in the summer. It's golf. It's not golf. It's Top Golf. Download the app, book a bay, and come play around. And now, Professor Kirk Goldsberry. Okay, we now welcome on uh, our very good friend. It is Kirk Goldsberry. We are in his uh, classroom. We Correct. just finished teaching his business class. 
at the University of Texas. So let's start there. How do you think we did? Because we have to be the dumbest. It was PFT, Hank, and I, and we have to be the dumbest people <laughs> ever to teach a business class. I don't think that's true, uh, but my students were thrilled to have you guys in our classroom. It means a lot that you guys would come here. Uh, they all love your show. Your show is very popular at the University of Texas, and I think we, we saw that in class today with the enthusiasm that yep. you guys received. So yep. thank so, you for you, joining us. We appreciate you having us. Nobody offered us an honorary doctorate or, or drugs like that, or drugs, which That's usually true. we get on can, the road. Can you give us? Uh, <laughs> can you give us an honorary honorary doctorate? Yeah, I think you guys are almost an honorary doctorate stage. Honorary MBA has been okay. bestowed upon both of you. Let's uh, go. And okay. I don't have the authority to do that, but mm -hmm. let's just go with it. Congratulations. Right. So it was a great. It, we we loved being here. Um, but I will say, at the end, I asked you a question, and you basically cut the entire. Uh, oh class short because i think it was like the scene when they pull back the curtain on wizard of oz i asked simply do you kirk goldsberry think that you took part <laughs> in ruining basketball because we do oh it hurts basketball is <laughs> my favorite thing in the world the fact that people would even say that big cat it breaks my heart but you you're one of the first people to point out that three uh, is more than two yeah well three is more than two <laughs> and mid-range shooting has gone down and and we've helped sort of illustrate why that is but man i as i said to my class kevin durant great longhorn uh back in action this week oh, yeah what are you doing in the tournament Suns. he's a great longhorn legend uh <laughs> two-time well, finals he on, mvp he, he was on campus for what four months he keeps coming back though he's, he's a big <laughs> part of the program uh, <laughs> but i love the mid-range shooting and kevin is is breaking the math right now if you he look is. at his mid-range he's arguably having the greatest mid-range season in the history since we've been tracking this for 25 years and he's breathing life into it and it's beautiful to watch so how do yeah. we do that how do we bring back mids you just need more kevin durant more guys who DeMar are seven DeRozan. feet tall yeah. yeah demar DeRozan, chris paul uh, guys who can make that shot at a 48, 50% clip like those dudes. Kevin's almost 60% right now. It's incredible. Wait, so what is the actual math where it's a, a mid-range shot is more valuable than a three-point shot? Like if someone's shooting 38% from three. Yeah. What's the math for the for the uh, two? So an average mid-range shot is worth about 0 0.8 points because they go in 40% of the time, they're worth two points. Yeah. Uh, an average three-point shot goes in 35% of the time. That gets you to 1.05. So an you average paint shot, yeah, how can I explain it? Paint yeah. and threes are each worth a little over one and mid-range is sitting here at 0 0.8 for the league. Now, there are exceptions mm -hmm. to that rule, and we just went through Kevin, Paul George, What, is, what are those worth? What is Kevin Durant's mid-range so right, That's worth? a great question. So right now, it's funny because an average Kevin Durant mid-range shot is going in 60% of the time, pretty close this year, which brings it close to a really good three-point shooter's number. Okay. Uh, and so Kevin is – and by the way, he's not taking easy ones. He's right. dribbling in the face of the best defender their opponent can put, and he's still doing it. Uh, and and it's, he's having an incredible season. We just hope he can stay healthy because it's it's so unique to watch. And Devin Booker on his team and Chris Paul on his team, the Phoenix Suns this year have a chance not only win the championship but doing it oh, in the mid range. Yeah, he's, it, doing, he's putting the he's doing the same thing he did with the Nets. It would be a massive, <laughs> massive <laughs> yeah. disappointment no, yeah. if uh, if Chris Paul and the Suns did not win the championship this yeah. year. Yeah, uh, and Ryan Rossillo, I don't know if you guys know this huge Chris Paul guy. Yeah, oh, huge Chris Paul I didn't guy. Know yeah, that. and it's he, good he, he yeah. expects big things. No. From I mean, listen, this, this is good because I'm not rooting for the Suns, and you are. Uh, you famously came on the show yeah. and told us the, the Brooklyn Nets have the greatest offense you've ever seen in your entire life. And well, then uh, for all 23 James Harden games got they hurt. played. Yeah. yeah, Kevin Durant actually tried to carry them. Kyrie got anti-Semitic. Like, a lot of things happened since then. It's crazy to think back. It was 2021. And I remember Kevin was carrying that team. He was. And he was. He had his. I was at that game him, seven. And he had his toe on the line. Yep. You and didn't he factor was that in. On yeah. such a heater moment that I knew that shot was going in. And I was already looking at his feet and I was on TV. I wasn't there. I'm not a big shot like you, big cat. But, dude, I mean, they were that close, even without uh, the, the injured players that year. They were very close. The Bucks obviously end up going on to, to win the championship. Uh, and they're a great team too, but yeah, they were they were pretty close. But you know, that's that's the league now. Yeah. They're dismantled. Yes. Yeah. If a game was played on a spreadsheet, they would be the best team ever assembled. They would beat the dream team. Mm -hmm. Definitely, the dream team would beat them. Have you gone back and tried to quantify the dream team and just how good? I, all I know about them is they never took a timeout. 
They never used one. The thing with the 1992 Dream Team is they were obviously a great assemblage of, of American talent. Michael Jordan, and Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Larry Christian Magic Lainer. at the end. Yeah, Christian Leitner obviously deserved Isaiah it. Thomas. Yeah. Over Shaq. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Isaiah Thomas wasn't there. I don't know. I don't remember why. <laughs> but the thing that's changed since then the most in, in the 30 or 40 years since then is uh, the, the world has caught up. You know, 12 years later, Manu Ginobili, my friend from the Spurs, beats Team USA in Athens. And now, you know, it, Team USA isn't getting much worse. We're still very, very good. But you you don't go into the 92 Olympics thinking you're going to lose. If right, you go yeah. into these Paris Olympics, you're going against a French team that's going to have Wembenyama, Gobert, uh, Nick Batum, like a five five starting NBA players on their home turf. And you're like, oh, my God, like we, we could legitimately lose. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So let's talk a little NBA. Yeah, let's do it. Um Let's do the West first because it is absolutely chaotic. Uh, what like is there any team that you confidently can sit here and say I feel good about them getting <laughs> to like the at least the conference finals? No, it's the weirdest season. It's, it's just the weirdest conference season I've ever seen. Period. Yeah. I mean, you look at it. To me, Big Cat, it's the unproven teams who have deserved the top three seeds. You have Memphis, which has their issues, Denver's at the very top, and Sacramento. And then on the bottom half, you have the Illuminati. You have yeah. Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Kawhi Leonard, uh, and LeBron James, right? And, and Luka, outside. If you look at who's won the finals MVPs for the last 10 years, those yeah. guys I just named have won most of them. And they're now sitting in the bottom half of the Western bracket against unproven teams up top. So all of my friends in the NBA media are going to have, okay, so let's say it's the Warriors Nuggets in 8-1. It's like, well, if you believe the regular season, the Nuggets are going to wipe the floor here. The, right. the Warriors can't win on the road. But if you believe in Steph Curry and Draymond Green and Clay Thompson and Steve Curry, you're going to be like, so nobody knows what to trust. If you believe, like, the last five, 10 years NBA basketball, the teams on the bottom half have a legitimate chance. If you believe what we've seen all season, it's Denver, Sacramento, and Memphis. I tend to side with the players. Like okay. I think there's gonna be some upsets in these first round mm -hmm. series. Yeah. Uh, and if you're Denver or Sacramento after these great seasons, you see Steph Curry, LeBron James in I the know. first round, what a bummer. But. Yeah, I was, I was reading your article, uh, your most recent one about Jokic's issues <clears throat> on defense. Yeah. Actually, I, I, I should, I should preface that by saying I didn't read the article. Yeah. I read the first three paragraphs before it became ESPN Plus only. Mm. I'll do and then one I, better. I, I read, read the his, first, the last two sentences as it was fading out. I just read his Instagram caption. Okay, so Jokic yeah. sucks at defense. So you hate Jokic, <laughs> and he gets he gets dunked on all the time by shitty players. Yeah, I, I'm honored. That story did really well for us at ESPN, but it was really cool because it was the first time one of my articles was labeled a hatchet job by oh. an NBA coach. Yeah, but you were just using job. numbers. Mike Malone called it a hatchet job, and I was like, these are just facts. I'm right. Mean, Mm -hmm. But in reality, on March 10th, Nikola Jokic went to San Antonio, his big favorite, and this viral video emerged. You guys probably saw that. It was all over the NBA internet on Twitter. It was just Jokic layup line. The Spurs guys just beating him. It's the most points any rim protector has given up all year. Uh, I went and looked at a bunch of numbers, and he's giving up more points per game on layups as the closest defender of any player in the player tracking era, which is now 10 years. Uh, and so I brought that up because it's in the heat of this this chance for the Nuggets to finally get out of the Western Conference for Jokic to be a three-time MVP. And I, I didn't think it was a loud enough part of the conversation. So I was just like, hey, guys, what about this? Uh, and that's the hatchet job yeah. I got mm -hmm. labeled for. But in, in, in all seriousness, when I look at the MVP race, Nikola Jokic's defense is a big sort of consideration that I don't think is being talked Embiid's about Because defense, it, he is that rim protector. Yeah, so the other two guys – are incredible defenders. Giannis is my favorite defender in the world. The Bucks have one of the best defenses in the league, and I think the Sixers are currently ranked sixth in defense, and Embiid's a huge part of that. Right. Uh, you know, meanwhile, Denver's middle of the pack or mediocre. And of the 16 playoff teams, if you look at Denver's performance in defense of the last three years, they rank 12th, 12th, and 16th in the last three years. It's been their demise. Right. And Jokic is, is really important. Centers have an outsized importance. Like quarterbacks on offense in football, centers on defense in basketball. Tell me who your center is, and I'll tell you how good your defense is in the NBA. Is, like, yeah. Is there any historical basis for teams that are middle of the pack on defense elevating their game in the playoffs, though, and, like, turning it on? Like, I think one of the late sort of 
chubby Shaq era Lakers teams as he played himself into shape yeah. like during the regular season was was middle of the pack on on defense but it was Shaq by the time the playoffs right. came around and it was, it was a problem but it, it is so fascinating because the NBA I love the NBA playoffs I obviously like it's it's my it's one of my favorite I, I love basketball but the regular season yeah. feels like it doesn't mean as much and what more than anything any other sport it's like similar to who's your who's your center it's like who are your starting five in the playoffs? Because yeah. you can win a lot of games in the regular season, trying a little bit harder, like, you know, getting people on off nights. But then when you have to play in the playoffs, it's like who's going to be playing in the fourth quarter? Who's going to get stops? That's the team. Right, and that's why these two sort of unproven teams in the West right now are, are, are near uh, – over-indexing on the betting odds, right? Like if you look at the, the Golden State Warriors who are terrible on the road, well, they're starting five if they can get them together. When right. They, if Wiggins comes back, it's like the numbers are great, and we saw it last year. They're pretty good. And then the Phoenix team is like, oh, they have Kevin Durant now. Right. All the regular season numbers. So I wanted to ask you guys this. It's like it's starting to feel more like the NHL, right? Like it, it, who's hot and yeah. who's healthy yeah. during the stretch run. Is that just the reality for basketball? That sort of seems with the Western conferences. Yeah. The Eastern conference is sort of more normal. Yeah. Well, and it's the, it's the old Pat Riley, which is like one of my favorite quotes about NBA basketball. It's, it's uh, uh, tr start. What is it? Play trust eight place or no. Yeah. Trust seven play. Eight, trust seven like, play. Eight. Yeah. 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 Right. Like you're you when you get to the playoffs, there's, you're going to play seven guys. Yeah. Like that's just really what it comes down to yeah. meaningful minutes. Yeah. And I think some of these teams, like the Lakers are another good example. That was not who this team was in October, November, December. If LeBron and AD show up healthy with these guys, they got at the trade deadline. Like the regular season legitimately doesn't no. matter. Yeah, He's so, doing the ESPN. So, thing. cause if the Lakers win one game, everyone on ESPN is like, watch out for the Lakers. Yeah. But what you're also doing <laughs> is you're saying like, the Lakers should win in the playoffs, which I like because I want to be disappointed in LeBron if they lose in the playoffs. It's again. their it's their championship to lose. It's <laughs> this is what you just said. I mean, said. you just said LeBron James <laughs> and A D. Aggregate, folks. Yeah. I mean, just think about those two. They should well, dominate. I, I do think the Lakers are very fascinating. I, what I was saying is the no, they, they're bad. The regular season identity is A, bad, yeah. but B, not indicative of who they are going into the playoffs. So like They haven't been healthy and they haven't had all these supporting pieces. They're playing great defense. They're simply one of the better NBA teams in the last 15 games or so, and that was without LeBron for a vast majority of that. They're scary. Oh, so they're yeah. better without LeBron. Dude, LeBron, no, they are definitely not better. You with, hey, said they hey, were. They <laughs> did a lot at the trade deadline, Big Cat, that made them a dangerous team and to your point they have seven or eight dudes that can play playoff basketball shoot threes defend they kind of resemble and i know where you guys are going to go with this they resemble the team we saw in the bubble like they're physical they're mm -hmm. stronger yeah. um and they're playing great defense uh and 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 they take like 150 more free throws than the next team i don't know if you saw that stat yeah they're physical team that's what it is mm -hmm. uh, but i'll say this you know what is is I think the dominant trait of this NBA season, guys, is it's wide open. And I know I think that's more fun. And we saw it in March Madness. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows who's gonna win. The thing with LeBron's legacy is for eight years in a row, we knew the yeah. Eastern Conference playoff preview was pretty simple. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, you're right. It's the Cavs it's or it's the Heat playoffs. or whatever. And yeah. it's like what I love about this year is that man nobody has a good feel for who's coming out of either side yeah, yeah we respect the kings on this podcast by the yeah. way we respect like the them we know everything about them i just want to hear from you why other people out there should also respect the kings because we we definitely do in word offense these dudes are scoring more points at a higher rate than anybody and they destroy really good defenses in big moments and it's not a fluke i mean fox and sabonis are just the chemistry couldn't be better. That Kevin Herter, who they got from Atlanta, has emerged as one of like these this Clay Thompson light, like a catch and shoot threat who spaces it out, and then they just are fast and young and smart. And what they aren't is defense. So right. the uh, haters' case against the Kings is 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 on the other side of the court, which is weird because Mike Brown, their coach, built his reputation as this defensive genius. So. You know, one of the stats, guys, that I, 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 I no NBA team has won the championship with a defense that's ranked 11th or worse in the regular season in a very long time. And they are not checking that box. The Denver Nuggets are not checking that box. So, if And you, that's, yeah, I mean, that makes sense because yeah. it really does. Like when the games slow down 
in the fourth quarter and it's a half court game it's like you got to get a stop yeah and there's no bad teams right. to, you you get exposed if you play Giannis in a seven game series or if you if you play lebron and ad in a seven game series and you don't get stops like they're going to smell blood and they're going to just destroy you over right. and over again chris paul like these players luka Doncic, i you know whoever makes it, it's like you can't cover up bad defense well luka's a bad defender yeah, I want. I actually want you to do an advanced stat. How many points Luca gives up, complaining calls on the other end? Oh, so I went to EuroBasket and watched him play for Slovenia, which was awesome, by the way. Like watching international basketball in Europe. But I came home being like, this guy is just giving up so many fast break points. Yeah. Like you talk about hockey, there's a power play yeah. seven times a game because it's five on four because he's back on the other end. Yeah, yeah complaining. I need that advanced stat. How many times? Oh, too many times. I'll look it up for you. Yeah. What about, for you. what about the opposite of Jokic, which would be Rudy Gobert yeah. in Minnesota? People are, people aren't respecting the Timberwolves enough. If they're a team that checks a defensive box, why aren't we talking more about the Timberwolves I, as a society? Yeah, as a society, <laughs> I think it's, it's a conversation we need to have yeah. more of PFT. And I think you guys provide a platform where we can talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves and feel comfortable just just make it so that our our listeners in minnesota they've had a tough time probably Mm. as long as they've been alive with their sports is this the year that timberwolves can win at least one postseason series this has nothing to do with pfts no no oh i I forgot that i had that massive (laughs) massive future on them a lot so the where the timberwolves are is the short answer is yes but you got to watch these matchups and what's happening in the lower half of the western bracket right now is chaos like you could i don't know who's going to be the six seven eight nine ten eleven it's all jumbled up if they get Minnesota, I'm sorry, if they get a team like uh, Memphis or if they get a team like Sacramento or Denver, of course they can. Everybody's unproven. They played pretty well in the playoffs last year. Mm-hmm. Um, they got a chance. They're playing well now, too, in my opinion. I think most people think they have a very good coach. Uh, Rudy Gobert and Anthony Edwards are, are, are pretty good players. But it's going to be a matchup-dependent thing. They yeah, got a yeah. chance. Who should, who should Minnesota fans be rooting for them to match up against in the first round? Would it be Sacramento? You know what? I think that's the normal, that's the obvious choice. Everybody wants Sacramento because yeah. they're Sacramento and like they haven't been good in our lifetime, like since like Vladi Divac was there. And, and this is their first time in the playoffs. Congratulations to them. It's one of my yes. favorite stories. Light the beam. I, I mean, the I, fact that they were almost, they almost so moved and everything, like yeah. that's a diehard group of fans that deserve it. Yeah, and I don't roast people on, on in social media as much as you guys, but I, I did like make fun of Light the Beam when it first came out. I made some stupid joke like, well, they're not going to need a lot of energy to fight. fight. And I yeah. was like, and one of their coaches texted me who I worked with at the Spurs and was like, F you, we're going to get it together. And sure enough, they did, and I'm happy to see it. I love it. I want that team in that city to be great. That said, I do think, whether you're talking about the Lakers, you're talking about the Warriors, you're talking about the Timberwolves, the team in that lower half, they might be picking Sacramento because of that defensive limitation. Yeah. And also Delhi. Delhi's plus minus is 16 wins this year over what they had last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the intangibles he brought. That would be fucked up, though, if, if it was the Kings and the Lakers in the playoffs and LeBron got all the calls and uh, it's just a Has flashback. that ever happened before? No. That would, that would be heartbreaking. <laughs> I'm not Walker's oh, halftime man. show, as my friend likes to call it. That that shouldn't count. But yeah, the, that, that will bring back memories. But it's cool to have that. That there, and the the other interesting thing that could happen is is Golden State playing Sacramento, which is like a regional thing. They, they're ninety minutes apart, yeah. and it would be like this cool thing for Northern California to have that. So East, yeah. Um, couple thoughts. One is uh, it feels like the Bucks are. It feels like last year they had Chris Middleton injury. He's he's getting back. He's starting to play a little bit better. If the Bucks have everyone healthy. It feels like they. It's like almost like a defense of their title in 2021. Um, is that fair to say? That's where I'm at because you know last time they were healthy, they got there and they won it, and so they deserve that respect. Uh, Boston deserves respect. Philadelphia. The thing is, the East does is sort Philly of, deserve respect. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what's going on. The East is sort of the new West. Like for the last 20 years, the West was stacked. And as, when I worked with the Spurs, it's just like, oh my God, we're playing like Chris Paul in the first round or whatever it is. And it's like, they're the seventh seed or we're the seventh seed. And right. it's like, that's where the East is right now. So it's Cleveland is playing Cleveland's really well. very good, yeah. Philly is really good. The Knicks are fun. I mean, you know, but I keep coming back to Milwaukee. Drew Holiday scored 50 points. He's their third option. Right. Uh, you know, when Brooke Lopez is playing defense like he is, 
they're impossible to score on in the paint. And Giannis is the most terrifying help defender in the league, like the best free safety in basketball, can guard anyone. Uh, and Chris Middleton, as you said, is just gives them another threat to get a bucket. And when they did win, they wouldn't have won without him right. when they did win. He got so many late game buckets that Giannis, like if there's a limitation in Giannis's game, it's late game execution. Yeah, They deserve to be the favorites. They have the best record without Chris a lot of the year. Um, I think they, they deserve to be the favorites coming out of the East. So Hank is sitting over here. He actually has been pretty honest that he's a, maybe not nervous, but something has been off with the Celtics. Mm. What is What has been off? You know, they've really leaned into shooting a lot of threes this year, and when those threes are going in, they look That's your fault. That's your fault. <laughs> let's, let's That's literally your fault. Partially I don't know why fault. they're shooting all these threes. I have no idea. <laughs> but, like, in October, November, they were making all of them 40% up and down the roster and then they they stop going in their offensive efficiency tanks and they start losing and, and and not a lot of games but enough that milwaukee catches up and you know i think at worst their offense depends a lot on three-point shooting and jason tatum isolation and it doesn't always work and and i think the the offense is the thing to watch there in a playoff series against defenses like cleveland potentially and the bucks no weaknesses on those defensive teams. Yeah. You might not get easy threes. Jason Tatum might have a harder time. And and look, all due respect to the Celtics, I think they deserve to be the second favorite to come out of the East. But I see a matchup with Milwaukee, and, and right now I think a lot of us would take the Bucks this time around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's talk Wimbanyama. I don't mm. know if we say his name right. We pronounce his name differently every I single time. I did notice on Wednesday's show that you guys might have said it incorrectly, mm, yeah. but don't make me say it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so is he actually as different as we're being told that he is? He's one of the tallest prospects in history, and he can shoot threes. Have okay. you Isn't he, like, that? lying that he's shorter? <laughs> I know, I'm serious. He's like Kevin but, Durant, like, doesn't want to be a seven-footer. It depends on where you measure, and, and me and PFT are big eye height guys. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we're going to bring that into the combine in Chicago. Maybe you guys will be there for the combine. But yeah, the eye height thing, I think his eyes are seven two off the ground. That's already. incredible. You know, I don't know what they are, but he's he's one of the tallest prospects around. The thing that need people need to talk about with him is the defense. He is he's defensive efficiency in a can. I think he can guard almost anybody in the league well, like and his his length. Nobody – imagine trying to shoot against a guy like that. So I'd fucking back him down. Yeah, he's get, like a I, buck 50. I've, I would, I would seen, body him. He gets yeah, bullied. You, <laughs> I've seen him he – got, he got bullied by some, like, I don't know, 6'4", 300-pound Latvian dude. Just put his ass into give him. Me one, give me one what box out, he would be hurt. This is an NBA over. deep cut PFT, but Kenny Lofton last year for in summer league, it's just the big hulking old oh, yeah, school. Oh, yeah, Louisiana big, Tech. Yeah, and I he loved him. took it to Chet. Yeah, and, and it was exactly what you guys are describing. He, Just like welcome to this. Yeah, huh? Is he on a roster? Kenny, Kenny yeah, he's yeah. on the Memphis Grizzlies. Okay, life. yeah, I love his game. He has he he would have been the best player in like 1993. For a long time, I legitimately thought he was related to the. I did too. The baseball yeah. player. Kenny yeah. Lofton, the baseball player, yeah. played hoops yeah. in Arizona too. And was really good. But he has the best. But then touch. you see his physique, and you're like, I don't think they're related. Yeah, because Kenny yeah. Lofton was like yeah. the sick outfield. No, he was the best. Like the like anything that he shot. Like like ten feet out, it would just roll in. Oh, great every touch time. around yeah. the rim. Yes. Yeah, great player. But yeah, I think uh, Wembenyama is is the most hype prospect, arguably since LeBron James. And a lot of it has to do with the yeah, he's Ralph Sampson with a three point shot. If that's too old school of a reference, I, I can't help it because it's been that long since we've had somebody that tall. Uh, that we've been this excited about in the NBA. Maybe so, Yao Ming. So my theory, and you can, I don't know if you're able to answer this, but I think the Spurs have gotten to the perfect position. This is like Pop's masterpiece. Mm. He thought to himself, I want to leave a legacy here. Yeah. We're in a position where we could win the lottery and get one from France. You nailed it. And then, you got it right that time. And then I bow out. I leave. Maybe I take a front office job. This is my last season. I've put us in the exact right position and now I'm out, the future is in your hands right now. From your lips to God's ears as a spur for life, I love that idea that they would get him. He has connections to Tony Parker and Boris Diaw. The Spurs have been very uh, good with international players for a long time. It does sort of fit poetically, but one thing people don't realize, even if you're in that very low category, they, don't ha they have a 14% chance. Yeah. And like, the lottery's rigged. Yeah, it, is it right? It yeah, is so, right. So if the lottery was rigged, where does where does David Stern want Wimbledon to go? 
Uh, San Antonio, right? I mean, it, like you said, it's the best story. Let's, yeah. So let's speak it into existence. Bulls. I've I've let myself believe this that yeah. they're going to be like, hey, the Bulls are never getting out of this stuck in mediocreville like roster. Let's rig it. I would look, you know, I know you guys are looking forward to some time in Chicago, but man, I miss going to big time basketball in Chicago with that fan base. They, they want they, they, it would be a great story. And you you actually are part of Adam Silver's like little in inner circle, so you probably will rig it yourself. You know how you guys do the the ping pong balls? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know how to do that. Yeah. Have you ever got it? Uh I've never tried. Are you guys going to let me try? You want to try? Yeah. yeah All right, let's try. try. All right, let's try. Here we go. All right, so for people who are watching on the YouTube, I have a 1 to 100 written on the board. And I will circle it of the number that I'm picking, and Kirk is not looking at the board, and he's going to guess. Hank is looking at the board, and he's furious. I'm going to use. Go I'm going to use my cosmic strategy. It? I can't see it. Am I supposed? To, I'm not supposed to see it. Okay. When do I guess? He's thinking about writing. I'm faking you out. He has not circled yet. He's going up, down, left, right. Okay, he's got it. Big cat. I'm going to use a Grateful Dead reference here because I was. I know you're a deadhead. I'm a deadhead. We've we've bonded. We're going to go to all these shows together. I was listening to the Grateful Dead channel on Sirius Network. Uh, one of my favorite shows is the Egypt show. They play the pyramids, uh, nine, sixteen, seventy-eight, and I'm going to go one of those numbers. Let's just go seventy-eight. I feel seventy-eight. <laughs> Are you serious? That's that fucking Are you insane. serious? He did it. You literally got it. He did it. Oh. Right in your fucking face, Hank. Do you see how easy that is? What do you mean it's rigged? What? I didn't tell him anything. I just told We would never rig this. What? I didn't tell him anything. <laughs> Hank, it's so easy. We literally just said, we, I didn't even think he was going to want to guess. What do you say? What are you saying, Max? Yeah. What about it? Reflection off the TV? Oh, why? Look no, what there's I'm no reflection. Oh. That is the that's trash. That, that's TV's angle. Can you, you can just see the celebrate ceiling. someone else getting no, it? I, this is, I mean, this is, that was remarkable. On. Look at what he thinks I can see. I, all I can see is the Come, reflection of a right here, light Max, in a rainbow. See the reflection. Yeah, Max. There's no he, chance. Don't take this away from Kirk. He nailed it. Can't see it. Can't see it. Can't see it. I almost picked. I almost picked 16. Yeah. So there you go. It was. It was either. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Sorry. I mean, it's that easy. All right. Last question. Sorry, not for sorry, you. dude. Last question. That was incredible. He he just got it, and you have never gotten it. Okay. He's just he's... silently staring at me. Last question. We do have to let's do a little March Madness. Oh uh, man, I'm excited. Have, you've been watching. Yeah. Who's winning it all? Well, my beloved Longhorns gave the Miami Hurricanes a, a run, and and credit to Jim Laranega, who we all adore. Uh, it's hard to root against that guy. I found a way because the Longhorns were playing him last weekend. But these dudes were making shots, man. Uh, for me, it's it's either Miami or or UConn, who seems to be one of the more talented. Okay, you don't respect you don't respect the little guys. I mean, honestly, my I've been waiting my whole life for this Final Four. Just chaos, five seeds, nine seeds, like whatever. And, and if Florida Atlantic wins, like that's like my childhood dream coming true. It's like a just a story. Rant, you make yeah. that bracket and you're like, no way this is going to happen. That would be the coolest story that could happen. Right. It's like, yeah. yeah. Florida Atlantic coming out. 37 of and three, they would be if they won it all. Yeah. Um, you know, but I think the more talented teams, which don't always come out on top are, are, are UConn and Miami. I mean, I know you guys are going down. What are you looking forward to? I, I mean, I have a future on UConn. I just am worried Miami, they might just make every shot. San Diego That's State, what they've been doing. Oh, San Diego State—they look like an NBA defense. team when they're when yes. they're, yeah, like the, yeah. the length and athleticism they have on the court. Yeah, no, there, there's a lot of like, oh, these guys are the you know mid majors, but I would not be shocked if any of these. <laughs> you guys had the great Mountain West stats coming into the tournament. Oh, well, yeah, they yeah, just yeah, used that. In oh, my people, mind. people were getting upset about it. It's like you guys got eliminated from the tournament in ten hours last year. <laughs> no. Like that's you have to say it, but San Diego State's been tremendous. It's been a great tournament. I just want to say, like, I found myself, like, really watching games and getting into this year, and I think the chaos helps. Yes. The, the, the thing I'd say against it is, like, I kind of miss some of the Blue Bloods in the Final Four. Okay. Mm -hmm. like, well, I, you're a snob. I don't know if I'm a snob, but last year was a little extreme on that side. It was Villanova, Kansas, yeah. uh, and then, of course, North Carolina. And 
Duke. And Duke. Duke. Yeah. I, I, somebody handed up, me a yeah. piece of paper up there. That, uh, have you heard the good we're news? Getting, we're getting, we're getting uh, close to look, the year anniversary that I put them in the grave. You can say that if UConn wins, they might become a blue blood. That's yeah. a good point. I think yeah. UConn is, is potential. It's not, I'm not on the blue blood uh, committee. I don't know who Yeah, that's us. Is, yeah. is, is, they are would they, have, one, yeah, are they would, one championship away from they would have, I would Five them, in the last 24 years. I would give them a Yeah, that's blood. crazy. That's crazy. And, and the next closest is Duke and UNC both have three in the last 24 years. Blue blood. Yeah, so blue, I think this is the blue blood Final Four. Yeah. They have a chance to, to become, what is it, wait, what's the name of the disease that you get if you're? Hemophilia. Hemophilia, yeah. They have yeah. the opportunity to gain hemophilia. Royalty. That's why they call it blue blood. Did yes, you know that? Exactly. I didn't know that. Uh, yeah, fun fact. I had one last question about March Madness, and this is my uh, – I have an old man take that I love to to bring out anytime Alabama and Nate Oates and his stupid you know spreadsheets falter in the tournament. Is that what their biggest problem is? Yeah. Oh. They, yeah, that is their biggest problem. Uh, do you think there's anything to be said for a team that shoots only threes and layups to struggle in big moments from the free throw line? They don't practice mid-range. Yeah, I think in the NBA, what we've seen is Kawhi Leonard and Kevin Durant uh, really excelling in these tight spaces that in the playoffs. The mid-range does seem to be where the biggest shots happen, whether it's Jordan's biggest shots. But I, I don't know, but there is – Again, there's a virtue to the mid range, and yeah, I, I, and the I, free throws suffer. Brandon Miller did not have a good tournament, and there's no, all sorts no. of jokes. But the bottom line is, I expected that player to, because the way he played in the SEC tournament, I expected him as an NBA sort of prognosticator to come out and continue that, yeah. and that team to go a lot further than they did. Yeah, That's why they struggled, stuff. I don't know. You can't put that in a spreadsheet. You nope. find out. He's in a different type of cell. I'm a fraud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, all right. Well, Kirk, you have one last question? Yeah. I was. At, there's another way that basketball has been ruined. I don't necessarily think that this one is your fault, but the, the gamification of the free throw line. Yeah. People getting these cheap fouls. James Harden, you know, jumping into people, drawing fouls. They found an inefficiency uh, that wasn't there before. Is there a way mathematically to fix that? Make free throws worth .75 points? Yeah. I think Dean Smith famously said the best – place to score on the free throw line or in the, on the basketball court is the free throw line and I, I think it took like a little too long for basketball players to really figure that out I blame the, the European soccer countries that taught us how to flop and yep. my friend Monte Ginobili again Italians just say Italians James yeah. Harden yeah. James Harden bringing that Italian strategy into uh, <laughs> into pro basketball he's perfect it's a really smart play nothing elevates the expected value of a possession more than a whistle uh, if you're in the bonus or if you have a two shot foul coming your way, like it, it's, but are free throws too easy? Yeah, I think they are. Maybe Ooh. move it back. Yeah. You know, what's weird guys is that the, the college basketball has one and -on one. And then when you make millions of dollars to shoot free throws, we, we don't need you to take one on one, like yeah. bring the one on one to the NBA. Yeah. I think that's one thing we could do to actually increase the risk for some of these, these guys, you're going to get zero points on the possession. If you don't make that front end. Yeah. It's terrifying like for these college yeah. kids in the tournament. Oh yeah. That's Dude, a great was, rule. What was the end of the game? San Diego state. Yeah. You missed the front he end. Missed that. Or no, it was a two shot foul, yeah. but he, if it was he, one and one, yeah. but it was a shooting foul and whatever we can get in that call. But that, how terrifying was yeah, that? Yeah. That second kid? one mm -hmm. was terrifying. He made yeah. the second one though. Yeah. I like that. Tell Adam Silver that. Yeah. Mr. Silver, Mr. And Silver, and also yeah. to rig it for the Bulls. Um, all thank right, well, guys. Kirk, thank you, thank you for having us. It's been On fun. behalf of the University of Texas and the McComb School of Business, thank you guys for coming to visit. It means a lot, and uh, hook them horns. Let's go. Yeah. Kirk Goldsberry is brought to you by Cross Country Mortgage. Football players make football plays, but they also make plays off the field, like the experts over at Cross Country Mortgage. They might not be doling out concussions or breaking bones, but they're dedicated to doing whatever it takes to get you into the home of your dreams. I'm closing on a home soon. I'm using Cross Country Mortgage for it. Cross Country Mortgage has a team of loan officers dedicated to getting it done and finding you the best possible loan terms available. They have an average close time of 21 days. That's crazy fast. They've got a wide variety of loan types, which means that they've got everything to cover everyone. With huge variety of products that they cover everything from renovations to refis and everything in between. So go with the players that will make the plays for you when buying a home. Cross Country Mortgage is dedicated to getting it done for you. Get a rate quote and Cross Country Mortgage will send you some swag. Go to crosscountrymortgage.com slash barstool. Kirk was also brought to you by BetterHelp. This show is brought to you by BetterHelp. Getting to know yourself can be a lifelong process, especially because we're always growing, 
We're always changing. The things that matter to me in my late 30s didn't ma matter to me five years ago. Maybe they didn't matter to me 10 years ago, 15 years ago. People change, their values change, things that are important to them in their life change. Your, your mind changes too, your brain changes. Therapy is all about deepening your self-awareness and understanding because sometimes we don't know what we want or why we react the way that we do until we talk through things. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com PMT today. Get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash PMT. Okay, let's wrap up the show. We got Firefest of the Week. Henry? Yeah, this one's kind of ongoing, too, because uh, I, I don't know what where it is. I was uh, – you guys know me. I'm a prompt guy. I'm a prepared guy. I like to, like to be ahead of the curve. I was packing for this trip last night around midnight, and I decided not to bring my backpack and instead go for uh, a carry because I didn't want to check a bag, a big bag. So I decided to bring a. Why? Carry. We're only go gone for four days. I'm going for ten days. Oh, uh, I'm going oh, on vacation. Okay. Don't know if I mentioned that. Didn't want to bring it, so I brought a carry-on bag and then like a little duffel as my carry-on. Go to pack my laptop in. Open my backpack. My laptop was not in there. It was midnight, so I wasn't going to go to the office to even look for it. And I didn't even know where it was in the office. Can I was like Newton get to it? replaying my my uh, steps. Had no idea where it was. So I – and obviously I'm going away. I have to have some type of laptop or something. So I had to bring – Do you? Yeah. Are, are you going to work? When are you going to use a laptop? I don't know. Maybe. Oh, for porn. Yeah, for th internet this porn. Is like, this is like when I bring my gym shoes. It kind of – well, that's the thing. It was like, do I not need my laptop? It's like, I probably, I probably do. Like, I don't know. Because so I, it, it's like if you don't bring your laptop, then you're openly admitting to everybody, I plan on doing zero work. Which is, I, I will, happy to openly admit that. I plan <laughs> on doing zero work. But I had to bring, I have a, uh, I have like an all business Pete, like the old laptop I used to stream during COVID. It's like one of those little Dell Mac, like little Del, Dell books or whatever you call mm -hmm. them. Okay. Dell books, yeah. The Dell books. And I just, I don't know. I just what feels, does that have to do with Pete? It just, that, that's what he uses. Oh, okay. Uh... It's and then today I, I hit up Evan and Shane because they're coming down to shoot a video we're shooting on Sunday. And I was like, can you look for my laptop at the office? He's like, yeah, it's not, nowhere to be found. Uh oh. Mm. So I have no idea where it is. Can you, know you track where Ben it? Mintz is? <laughs> I think he might be in Lake Charles. Shit. Yeah. Am I stolen it? Uh, so, so your fire fest is you're not doing any work? I don't have and a laptop. And you lost your laptop. I lost my laptop. No, the not doing any work is, is like a, more like a fire, fire fest, a good fest. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> fest. Yeah, this is this is fire fest. Oh, yeah. speaking of fire fest, like literally fire for Hank. I found out a very interesting fact about Henry. Oh yeah, you uh, told me you were gonna save this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when, we, when we were doing our our, uh, our golf stream with Rudy, uh, Hank was like, "I think I'm gonna turn my fog machine on," and I, I was like, "Wait, what? Does Hank have a fog machine in his apartment? Is that, it a humidifier? That no, no. That he turns on. Hank has a fog machine." That he turns on when he's just like trying to blow off steam or, or relax. He just calmly goes home and turns his fog machine on. Yeah, no, that was. I don't think you understood. I mean, that was me and Rudy oh, going no, way over you your got head. Got, I you might got have gotten got. Damn, PFT, we were making us look old. What's fix, your fog machine? Out. He's, fog is, is, a, he's is a euthanism. He's smoking weed. He's smoking marijuana. So marijuana cigarettes? Yes. Just a little oh, pen. No, PFT, <laughs> now I wish you had told me this. <laughs> In confidentiality, so yeah. we, I could have been like, wait, let's think about this. Because I actually... was like, yeah, I think I'm going to – I I had a bad shot. I was like, I think I need to go turn on my fog machine. Oh, And then no. PFT's like, you have a fog machine? And I I thought he was playing along. I was like, yeah, I just turned no, it on I, I, in right my Right now, this yeah. is me continuing yeah, to play yeah. along. I, I thought the entire maybe time. a humidifier. No. I don't know. Yeah. No. Because uh, I was laughing so hard at the imagery of Hank just like having a <laughs> no, tough day at work. And, sitting in and some sit, Yeah, he's like, I got to turn the fog on. <laughs> It just, always makes like, me feel he's better. Like, he's like Undertaker's <laughs> entrance, just sitting yeah. there. Yeah, now that, like now that I think about it, I'm a real fucking moron. <laughs> yeah, that one hurts. That was dumb. Damn yeah, it. No, that, uh, uh, I thought you were talking about the Mezcal Gatorade Zero. Oh, yeah, so that's another fun fact that I learned about Hank. That's just an elite drink. I was like, what, what cocktail are you making, Hank? And he said he likes to relax with a, a Mezcal and Gatorade Zero. 
Dude. Mix. I used to drink. I had a whole summer where I was just drinking Gatorade and vodka. That's that's normal. Yeah, that's normal. I had my friend who owns a bar in Chicago put it on the tap for me. Yeah, Gatorade. It's a good Red drink. Red Punch Gatorade. It's a good drink, but Gatorade Zero and Mezcal. I don't think that's ever been made by anybody before. Yeah, that was just like a, I don't I don't really drink at my house by myself a lot. So it's just I had Gatorade Zero, and then I had some Mezcal. It Bang. is a wild, it's wild, a wild crazy combo. combination. It's good. It's really good. Yeah, you should try it. Don't okay. knock it until you try it. You have great taste. I, everyone says that, yeah. Barbara Cuffalo. Yeah. yeah. Barbara Cuffalo. You can get some soup at the hotel. Do they have soup? I don't know. Lister Quill? Oh, shampoo soup. Yeah, yeah obviously. obviously. Yeah, that's, that's the, the like next about question. Yeah. Soup? Come on. Well, that's really embarrassing. You thought he was talking about actual <laughs> soup. Eh? All right, PFT. <laughs> uh, my fire fest is that I thought that Hank was using a fog machine <laughs> in his house when he was actually smoking weed, which makes me <laughs> very uncool. Uh, and in addition to that, it is opening day, so I, I retold the, uh, the story of my dad punking me on opening day, April Fool's Day, back when I was in elementary school, where he picked me up from school, gave me my glove, drove out of the parking lot, and then told me April Fool's and made me go back to class. And people pointed and out- And Shereen in the bathroom at school. People, well, people pointed out something I didn't realize. There haven't been any opening day Orioles games on April Fool's Day throughout the entire 90s. Oh, no. So I went back and I looked at it, this motherfucker, my dad, pulled an April Fool's prank on me on April 2nd. Oh, that's illegal. A full 24. So that not illegal. So not only did he make me go back to class, but it wasn't even April Fool. He was just like. Damn. He, he must have done something devious. He pulled yeah. a psych on me. He just yeah. psyched me. You must yeah, have done some devious shit. I don't know. I don't know what I did to deserve it. It's funny in retrospect, but yeah. um, it does make it worse finding out that not only was it was it a punk, but it was also just not even April Fool's Day. Yes, that does suck. Um, all right, my fire fest is that I have to sit in the last fucking row of a football stadium to watch a basketball game. Yeah, it's tough. That sucks. That's tough. This is going to suck. Yeah. You should get binoculars. You're just going to watch the the, uh, the Jumbotron. I, I promise to the AWLs I will not watch the Jumbotron. That's, yes, I you won't. Will. I'll watch the court. Back in the, back I'm going the... to give you all. I'm going I'm to call fouls from all the way up there. Someone who snuck into a lot of basketball games and ended up sitting in the last row, That's you'll just end up watching the screen so i could just watch tv yeah maybe i'll watch it on my phone but you'll be in the atmosphere which i'm sure will be electric oh, for the san fau san, san diego, diego state, state yeah. game yeah well, the you, fans will be in there rocking if you hit your first bet you're gonna want to stay up there maybe for your second that's bet. true if no yeah you're right i haven't decided who i'm gonna bet on for the first game but yeah although you guys are gonna get good seats i'm going owls baby damn i think i'm gonna go i don't know fuck i I'm don't san know Di i'm san diego state yeah Northern. Because you're going there? Yeah. Because you want to party with them? Yeah. I'm, they got a beach at FAU, too. Dusty May on the podcast. Nothing. Nothing? Doesn't do anything for you? Owl up. Okay. Um, all right. That's our show. Uh, we kick it to ourselves. We did the lottery ball back in the studio. The, the Kirk, you can admit the Kirk Goldsberry thing now. It was not fake. Yeah, it wasn't fake, Hank. I don't know what you want me to Hank's say. Hank's too woke. He, he got the number. I... It wasn't fake. He could not see the look at the reflection right look now. Look at the reflection. You can't see it. He had he walked you through his reasoning of picking a random number. We were talking about Grateful Dead before we got in here. Okay. You're too inside your own head. Yeah, right? that sucks for you that he was able to get it that easy. It's just like I don't know. You guys are you know you you're really laying it on thick with like the Bachelor. He, and oh yeah, the Bachelor came into the office. Like, if, if you didn't see the video of it, uh, it sucks the Bachelor it. came into the office. He's an AWL. Shout out Zach. He came in with his bride to be or bride. I don't know how that works on the Bachelor. It's called a fiance. Uh, <laughs> you can also say bride to be. Yeah, that's a that's a normal thing. But I asked him just pick a number because we just had Stav on the show and we just did the drawing. I said. We just did it. What would your number have been? And he fucking nailed it. First guess. Everyone gets it except you. Well, maybe not. Let's kick it to ourselves. See if Hank gets it. Okay. We're wrapping up the show. Numbers time. Getting ready for the final four. We're in Houston. Come see us. Kirby's Ice House. Five to seven on Friday. One to three on Saturday. Local time. Numbers. Oh, wait. Hank, have you ever gotten this? No. Numbers. 16. 18. Hank? 46. Seven. I don't want to win. I'll say 17. For the record. For Biden. If I win, I'll be. 42. 42 for for uh, memes. Evan, what do you got? Two. Two? 82. 
82. What was your number, Hank? 46. He picked 46. I picked 17. You don't want to win, Hank. 59. Oh. 59. Thank God. Yeah, right. You're trying. You're trying to win. All right, that's our show. We'll see everyone on Monday. Love you guys. Tigers can eat up to 40 pounds of meat and then not eat for a week.